Blog Talk Radio. Now if you think I'm some sideline type chick, think the guy's gonna tell me lies, best recognize real quick, bitch, you got the wrong bitch, bitch, you got the wrong bitch, you got the wrong, wrong bitch, if you think you gonna slanderize my name, you done lost your mind, ain't got time for all these games, bitch, you got the wrong bitch, bitch, you got the wrong bitch. Hey everybody, we are live on there. Let's talk with Block Talk Radio. I'm your host, Melissa, and tonight I've got Rudy, who's co-hosting with me this evening. Uh, last night we got a caller uh, who called in while I was trying to do an interview with Rudy, and um, he actually threatened Rudy. So I got a little clip of that, and we'll go ahead and play it, and then we'll talk about it. While well, I got you here, invite me to your camp. Invite you? What, what am I going to yeah, invite you, you, you to my camper? You've been talking a lot of. You've been talking a lot of stuff. I'll come there and do the interview right there in your camper. Oh, you wouldn't do no interview invite, in my camper. Invite you, me I, to your camper. If I invite you, that means I want you here. I'm just saying. You had the 19 year old boy talking about y'all you was going to pull up want, on you're me. You're inviting me publicly I'm just to saying, your camper because I'll come. I'm not inviting, hey, look, dude, I'm not inviting I'll anybody. Come. I'm I, saying you know if somebody me, dude, pull up right in my now, yard. I'm in that mood. I'm in that fun loving yard. mood. I want to put on a kangaroo oh. suit with you in your camper, yeah. dude. I want to put in a camper suit. You know, Jim Estelle, she, she sent me a little old stick. I you are the least. You are the least. I want to show you're you that. Least, you're the least fucking person I would be worried Invite about. Invite me. Let's get that straight. Invite me. Let's get that Invite straight. Invite me, cat turd. Invite me, dude. All right. Invite me. It. You're we all right. Invite narcissist. me. A true narcissist. And there you have it. That's what happened last night. So, Rudy, I don't know. I talked with a couple people today, and, I mean, that's a serious threat to uh, bring over that particular ball bat that was sent to him because uh, you've seen the pictures of it I have. Um, did you see the pictures of that bat? Mm-hmm. And what did you see on that bat? What kind of bat is that? I think the bat that I saw was a bat with a bunch of, like, spikes and uh, stuff like that and with your regular, like, baseball bat. Um, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wire around it. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. And and why would you want to go to someone's house and show them a weapon, a bat? You know, this is coming from a man. Let's keep in mind, this is coming from a gentleman. Uh, I, I prefer not to call him a man. Let's just say, let's use the term gentleman. This is coming from a gentleman, gentleman, uh, who has done, and, and Melissa has, she has that clip as well, but he has a habit of riding at 3 o'clock in the morning with a 19-year-old uh, young man with a learning disability and uh, looking for people at 3 a.m. in the morning with his gun. And now oh, he yeah. just, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and now he just on last night's show, he just said, invite me, I'd like to come do an interview in your living room. I'd like to show you my baseball bat. Um, you know, that was – maybe it wasn't a, a, a direct threat, but it was a threat. He didn't say, I'm coming to your house and beat you up, but he was he was insinuating for me to – he was insinuating for me to uh, – he was insinuating for me to say, hey, yeah, come on over. That way they could roll up, and he said, oh, no, he invited me. And then, you know, him and he's got somebody else with him. Oh, they can say, oh, yeah, Rudy pulled something out or Rudy had something in his hand. Anything could happen. I, I didn't yeah. just wake up yesterday. I'm not an idiot. I'm not scared of this guy, um, you know. But, you know, who, who invites somebody? Who even asks someone? That's not on mutual speaking terms. Why would you ask someone to invite you to 
to to their house. I mean, well, we especially know we, uh, there's there's a little more background to that because he was actually telling people that he'd like to see them go over and push your camper over too, right? Oh yeah, yeah, and and he had comments today from what we think is a fake page. Um, uh, Gemma, we think, uh, but it was saying that uh, the fake Gemma page, or the, the, it didn't have a picture, so I can't say it was Gemma or not. Uh, but it was talking about how I pissed her off or something, and said that she would like to uh, come steal my camper with me in it. And Randy said, "What was it? The exact words? I hate to not say." exactly what was said but he made a comment about something about putting it out in the desert with me in it um so i mean this guy is reckless this guy is out of control this guy is just i feel sorry for that for for the 19 year old because he is with a reckless person that at any moment could just flip his top and what if he flips it on this 19 year old a uh, young man with a learning disability. Um, I really feel yeah. bad for him. Yeah. Well, in my opinion, him calling in was an attempt uh, to try to intimidate and harass me um, to get me to go off on him, you know, to fly off the handle, to cuss him out, hang up. But he didn't get that reaction from he, from me. That That did not work. Um, after that didn't work for him, uh, I don't think he really had a backup plan except for to go on the attack, attack, attack. Um, and he was still kind of looking for some reaction out of me, um, when he called me this, and I'm going to play this clip for everybody. Hang on. You say anything there, criminal child. Yeah, I heard him. Now, did you hear that? He's calling me a criminal child abuse woman. Randy has no respect for people who have been drugged through the system and actually won all, uh, their charges. You know, just everything dropped uh, and won their cases. And, um, you know, back in April, Randy did a, a big blast on me and my family. Um, his allegations were horrendous, uh, and we're going to listen to some of those clips, and I'm going to go into a little bit of what he's done to me and my family. Hang on. Listen to this. She's like the queen bee, because the truth is, here's what's happening right now. That... 36 by 12 by 6 foot, that's not very tall, the building is sitting on a little five acres of land, and that's all she's got. But it's in basically the backyard of a gigantic nice house that belongs to Melissa Foster's mother. And what Melissa Foster does is take advantage of the compassion and the good heart of a woman who is now around 70, retired, has worked hard, has invested well, has taken care of herself and her savings. And that woman really is her hotel. Melissa and her husband and her son, they basically live right there in their mother's very nice, very big house, very safe, comfortable house. That's what she does. She's leeching off her mother. And that the little storage building you just heard about, that little building is not even completed, but they did. Melissa and Troy did build a little separate section onto it for her son with special needs to have to stay in. That's a barn, folks. That's a barn. Now, she was going to help me. She ought to help herself. That's a $8,500 storage building. That's a yeah, it's a shed. White with no insides. It's a shed. And she's like the queen bee. Because the truth is... That's ridiculous. Here's what's happening Is right that now. not ridiculous? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, and to say that we've put our special needs son that we've added on some kind of room onto the, the, the shed, you know, and, and that we live in, in mom's big house there, but he's living in a shed. That is absolutely ridiculous. And you know what, Rudy? He's going to have to prove every bit of what he says about me and my family because this is well, going, well, I mean, it's went too far, and it's went too far for well, such a long time. I've given him an opportunity to shut up, leave me and my family alone, but he doesn't. He won't. He keeps dragging everything out all the time, and he's trying to lump well, people together like there's some kind of conspiracy going on. He didn't recognize that each one of us have our individual reasons, and and the most uh, common denominator with everybody is he goes out and puts these blasts on people with very little information, and then he adds to whatever he wants and thinks that nobody's going to come stop him. It's ridiculous. But go ahead. Well, what I found interesting about what he just said, he was talking about a little shed on five acres of the land. Uh, have, have you ever seen Randy's brother's house that Randy stays in? I've, I've seen pictures of it. Okay. It's a little small, very, very small, two-bedroom, probably, it's probably 100 years old. Um, so, um, where he has, where he has the room to talk about where someone lives or um, this or that, um, and he's saying you're mooching off your mom. But yeah. let's 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 go back and from yeah. Mr. Davis's words. Mr. Davis said you're mooching off your 70 year old mom. Okay, what's Mr. Davis doing? Mr. Davis is living in his brother's shack in the woods um, that he doesn't have to pay rent on. Um, Okay, so his brother pays, well, but Melissa paid taxes on it uh, because the taxes hadn't been paid in like five years. So, you know, he hasn't paid taxes on it in five years. Somebody, his brother, I guess, was paying the taxes. Um, so he's actually, this is where I'm confused. So he hasn't worked in 20 years. He's living in a house that don't belong to him. He drives, well, he uh, he's not driving a car now because the vehicle his brother gave him broke down, so he don't even have a car unless he drives his cousin slash girlfriend's car. So this is what I don't understand about Randy. So he's actually mooching off of his his brother, his seventy some year old brother. He's mooching off his brother. So when Randy does something, it's completely all right that Randy lives in his brother's house for free. It's all right that Randy has to ride or drive in other people's car. It's all right that Randy Scott Davis has not had a public job in 20, 20 years, and he begs for money on the Internet. It's okay yeah. for him to do it. But it's not okay for you to live with your mom, your mom. That makes you a – Melissa, you are, Melissa, you are a bad person. My mother and I, are, we're neighbors, and yeah. I do spend a whole lot of time down there, you know. But, you know, she's needed a lot of help over the years because she is older. Yeah. But he tried to say that she was retired and I'm abusing my mom. I'm talking like elder abuse. Like, you know, in that blast, oh, they were going to call, you know, uh, elder abuse on, on me. Never met me, never met my mother, never been on this property, nothing, nothing. But it, yeah, he says that about my mother and says she's retired and we're, we're, you know, just abusing her. My mother is gainfully employed. She's not even retired. She's not even retired. We've got a caller here. Hang on. Hey. You're, Hello. You're live on air. You want to talk? Hi. How are you guys? Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm getting my blood pressure up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. Do that. Stay calm. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about what <laughs> yeah, happened so, last night? Did you listen to the podcast? Yeah, I did, and I was a little disturbed. Um, I think my honest opinion, and I, I spoke to Rudy about this today, is um, I kind of missed the beginning of the show. Sorry about that, but um, 
My my opinion is that I, I, I had a grandfather that went through a trauma bio surgery, and I know that it can do a lot of things to you mentally. And my grandfather was a deputy, deputy sheriff. Um, he was a very kind, loving man. And I watched after his surgery, after everything that happened, and he got really angry. He would snap, the, the, you know, like shit, over nothing. He would snap. And he got very angry over things that were kind of pointless. But I kind of, I, I'm not giving any great excuse for this. I'm just, I, I'm, I'm trying to put two and two together with what he's been through. Um, I think he can't keep up with his lies, um, so it's starting to anger him a little bit as to what is what anymore. Um, there's been so much shit flying in so many directions that uh, he can't keep up anymore, and he doesn't know what is what and who is who. Um Everything that's being thrown out there, like people's past, like they seem to think throwing my past out is going to upset me and make me angry and get a reaction when I really don't care. Like that's my past. I don't live there anymore. You know, I, I moved yeah. on. Just like Rude, you know, he, he's everybody makes guess. I guess the only person in, on this planet that's perfect is Randy. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, yeah, he's perfect. That's yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, because what he did so, 20 years ago, what he did 20 years ago. I don't know what she's Was that me or her fading out? Uh, I'm here. Oh. We can still hear you. I, I, okay. Well, I was just saying, what he did, tw- I mean, all I hear, I like what you said about the past. Uh, my thing with the past, the funny thing about a the past, whether people want to admit it or not, we all have a past. We all have a skeleton in our clothing. Uh, but like me, you, Melissa here, the other Melissa, and, and many others, we are not living in the past. We are in the present. We are trying to build a better future for ourselves, for our children. Um, but Randy is still stuck on what he did 20 years ago. He's still stuck on bringing up information on people that happened 10 years, 30 years. Because that's all he knows, Rudy. That's all he knows what to do. He doesn't know how to live in the moment. He doesn't know that he, he, I mean, like I said, he's obviously perfect. He doesn't do anything wrong. You know, he's one of these people that says, I the system, but all of a sudden he's become God to the system. Which I don't understand that. You want to help people, you want to advocate, but here you are throwing people's past out, you know, lies and nonsense. I mean, I sent him the one thing you will find online that you know was 20 years ago with my oldest daughter, and <laughs> there was no questions asked. I mean, a good writer and a good reporter will ask questions and find out the facts of what happened. He got the appeal. He doesn't know what happened. The three years before that, he has no clue. Just like with him putting out in 2015 the domestic violence, he doesn't know that was between my, me and my sister. He doesn't understand that the neighbor called the cops and the $153 was a court court fee, and they dismissed it without with prejudice, which which meant yes, I can still be charged with it had in the next year something happened between her and I. But if you pull my record. It's not there because it was dismissed. So he tends to throw people's stuff out there. I mean, it's like this. It's like I said, I think I told Melissa this. When you get in trouble and you do your time, right, say no matter who you are, say you get in trouble, you go to jail for six months, you pay your fines, you're off probation, you do everything you're supposed to do. And then you got somebody that comes in years later and wants to hold that over your head. They call it double jeopardy. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not right. I paid my right. dues. I did my time. I moved past it. I became a better person. So why is this person over here feel like it's relevant to throw it out to the world, throw it out in somebody's face when they've already moved past it? And then he gets upset when people throw it in his face of the things he's done. So nobody would do that if you wouldn't do it first. 
it, it, it's kind of a vicious cycle of um, bullshit, is what I call it. it. It doesn't really matter at all. At all. Well, I, I've said I don't this care so what many she's of... done in the past. I don't care what Rudy has done in the past. I don't care what Melissa has done in the past. I don't care. I know you guys for who you are today, and it's my choice who I talk to. It's my choice as an American and as a human who I choose to be friends with, not Randy's. Right. Yeah, I what? Tell me who I can like and who I can't, who I can be friends with and who I can't. You don't pay my freaking bills, I'll tell you that. He well, couldn't man, even pay been... my car payment if he wanted to. Amanda, I've been saying this for many years now. Uh, uh, the person that got me to doing uh, these podcasts and stuff was Raquel Opia, and she told me one of the first things you see when interviewing somebody or trying to figure somebody out, everyone has a pattern. Once you find that pattern, you can figure out what what the person is. Uh, I found How many times out have early. we talked that, Rudy? How many times yep. have we talked about patterns? Yep. How many yep. times have Rand- we talked about projection? Yep, yep. And Randy's you know, pattern wants- is... Go ahead. Sorry. Randy's pattern is... All right, let's 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 just... And this ain't kicking the man. This is just this is just throwing facts at us. It's not throwing... You know, he, he wants to fight for family rights and... And anybody in the mo- movement knows that the family courts don't go off of evidence. They go off of preponderance of the evidence, which is an accusation or hearsay. Okay? So why would you Absolutely. do the same thing to parents? Why would you use a preponderance of some hearsay that someone said or something you made up? Why would you do the same thing that a social worker that you claim you're trying to fight and tr- and change, but – what has Randy done the majority of his life? He's ran three let women. Ask, let me ask you three this, Rudy. And this, and this, this will maybe, maybe we'll shed some light on it. How many people do you know can hinder a fugitive back into a car, call out the county and the sheriffs, go to jail for five months under no charges, supposedly, allegedly, and not have it on record? Unless you are what? A CI. Or you're exactly. giving information. How many advocates do you know that ask for your case file? Because I've worked with plenty and they don't need my case file. No, they may want information he, on your case. He, just like he said, he said it in his own video. He said it in his own video. And I think it was a couple weeks ago. It was, I don't know, it was about a month ago um, when he first got on and he stated um, with, that he has APS involved, and he doesn't want to, you know, cause any problems with them. He respects them, but he doesn't. He'll say that and oh. that to turn around and go, oh, they're this and they're that, and that, you know, I mean, come on. The guy doesn't know left from right half the time. I mean, it's a pattern. Yeah. He pro- everything he says is a projection of himself, everything. And he's kind of like talking talking to him now. It's kind of like watching Joe Biden on TV um, here lately. <laughs> That's funny. That's so funny. But if you think <laughs> yeah. about it, if you, okay, I've known Randy for about four and a half, five, almost five years now, you know. So what's the number one he asks you when he gets your case? It's what is the number one thing in your case that CPS would use against you? And what does he and do? he writes that stuff the minute, down. The mm-hmm. minute you disagree with him, he takes that one thing and uses it against you. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I'm too, I mean, I'm sitting here just kind of wondering. I heard a little birdie told me that uh, he's going to sue me and take half of my farm, which is my husband's farm. So I'd like to know which half he's taking, the upstairs bathroom or the downstairs. <laughs> Well, Amanda, Honestly, I got five thousand square foot house. I'd like to know which which bathroom he's taking. He uh, has do you to have show any some sort of damages in a civil suit? And you know, there's he doesn't even have a job. So where's the damages? He doesn't have anything. He doesn't have right. anything. He can't do and, anything. Which I 
He can represent himself all day long, but you still got to file the paperwork. And what's he going to do? Use Sebastian's money for that? He's right. already charging him rent because he thinks there's a loophole there. What's it, what's it going to do? I ain't afraid of Randy. Rudy ain't afraid of Randy. Nobody's afraid of Randy. They really don't and care. you know something else? Me and you and me and uh, Melissa, me and a lot of people today has talked about this. I am very, very, very concerned, and and I'm I'm going to make some phone calls myself tomorrow because I'm very concerned because you know I do file taxes. I do a 1099 every year, so I am considered a taxpayer. I am very concerned that Randy brags that he has someone that works for a agency, and this person that works for this agency is using this agency's software, data, um, their resources. Well, if not, you won't say the name, I will. Well, well, hold on, let me finish. So this person is using all of these uh, taxpayer, taxpayer, um, taxpayer-paid services that were meant for, like, this business, this organization. I'm very concerned that they're getting personal information from people that an an average person couldn't get. And to me, that is is someone abusing the authority of their work. It's illegal. You're using a government. Yeah, you're using a government system to pull for personal gain. It's illegal. You can go to prison for that. Yeah, and and you're putting it. And we got we got the proof that she's pulled Melissa Foster. They they pull stuff on her as far as uh, what was it, my property, uh, different stuff. They just pull stuff on you, Amanda, your husband. They pull stuff on me. They pull stuff on everybody. They I've got can the pull videos. Some, they can pull. Here's the thing, Rudy. I don't care what they pull. They can pull whatever the heck they want. I don't care. And they, you know, they can joke around about it. Oh, she she will care. Well, prove it. <laughs> I don't care. This is my life. You don't know me. You don't know me enough to talk to me. You don't get facts. You don't. You just throw out bullshit because you think it makes you look better. You know, it doesn't make you look better. It shows your character and it shows that you are unreliable. And it. Shows, I mean, smart people see this, and we've had this conversation, you and I, Rudy, about how you have leaders and you have followers, right? Yeah. Leaders are smart people that see through the bullshit and go, I'm done. Followers are the ones that keep want to keep want to uh, keep that drama going. So they keep throwing it out there and twisting it. And it's like the game of telephone when we were in kindergarten. You know, it just keeps getting twisted a little bit here and twisted a little bit there. Randy can't I, – I don't even know what to say about that man anymore. I don't even know. What? Well, I will say he's not a leader because I've said this a million times. A real leader will try to find other leaders to lead with them, or a real leader will find other people and try to build them up to be better leaders than they are. Uh, People like Randy that wants to be the leader, he wants a big entourage of followers. That's all he cares about. But he can't get that. He can't get that because people are smart. And, and, and you know, Melissa asked a, asked a very, you know, she, she's been asking really good questions, and that's about the family rights movement. And there is no family rights movement anymore. There was, but there was too many alphas that wanted to be on top, and too many people started calling other people out. And that's why it is where it is. That's why all the good people <coughs> backed out or went on their own way and did their own thing because, Nobody has time for the bullshit. It's about one thing, our kids. It's about changing the system. It's about getting into, you know, offices, whether it be your township, whatever, get into it and start changing things. But people don't want to do that. You have a phone in your hand 24-7, and you don't want to research something. That's your stupidity. That's the follower's stupidity. It's not hard to do. You do it. I've done it. Other people I know have done it. I mean, I don't have to have a stock account, which, by the way, I sold the one I had for 
quite a bit of money to one of Randy's enemies, which was great. I hope you no. Yeah. No, no, ma. No, ma, ma, ma. Buy a, yeah, yeah, buy him love a nice car because she starts work on Wednesday. And, yeah. Somebody that's so, donating to uh, my friend to help her get back on her feet. And it's great. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Um, She's doing wonderful. I just want everybody to know this because I am so proud of her. And, uh, you know, she didn't think I'd come down and get her. And you have to pick and choose who you help in this life because you have a lot of people that say they want help and they don't want to help themselves. And Randy made a point that, uh, you know, she was lazy and only could cook macaroni and cheese. Well, I've had her here for quite a while, and she don't even like noodles. She only liked the smell of noodles cooking, so I doubt she cooks macaroni and cheese. Number two, I am so happy she's here on this farm. She has done so much. She, I don't even have to ask her, man. I don't, we usually get up early. Like she's like, I got the chickens out, the horses paid, and I'm like, what? Cook dinner. She helps with the kids. The kids love her to death. Like she is amazing. I I I don't know where he comes up with all this bullshit. Really. She's just an an amazing all around person. She she just she's awesome. And I'm glad she's my friend. And I'm glad you know the people that have stuck with her have stuck with her because she's a good person. She's a really 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 good person. And I hate to say it, but. You know, I really liked Randy at first, but he turned out to be this evil, evil, demonic, horrible person. And I'm almost embarrassed to say I even know him. Same, same, same. I feel the same way, Amanda. It was a mistake on my better judgment to ever get involved with any any of that. But, you know, he does have a way of pulling uh, the wool over people's eyes. We we all know that. Um, and, you know, he has said many times that he wants everything to stop and go away, but he's really given no indication of that. And I'm going to play this clip and see what y'all think about this. But... Stay tuned for what's coming. Our first real show on The Watchmen will be roughly 14 days from now because that's how long they have to schedule the hearing. And after that, we'll do Meet the Millers Part 2. We'll bring out things on these people that you could not imagine, including in-person videos, drone footage, court documentation, and other materials from witnesses who are neighbors to these people who are doing this. Now, now that's coming from somebody who was just on the Dick Liberty show and was telling him that he just wanted everything to stop and go away. But, yes, he did. Yeah, but here he is, you know, um, two weeks from now. I mean, th- that video right there is his own video that he did yesterday on the 31st. So he has no intentions of stopping what he's doing. And um, really, you know, we were, you had mentioned about he was uh, stalking a woman. I also have that, and I'm going to play that for listeners. And by the way, this was a video from July the 7th, and you can actually go view this video uh, on YouTube at All My Love, Miss Cindy. So here it is. And her old friend, Megan. Megan Schultz. Got to find where she lives. She wants to uh, get up with me and do some stuff. Hey, wait a minute. That right there is. That it? Might need to come back by here again. Megan's kind of timid. She called me a coward. I'll be around tomorrow. Just call me. We'll fix it. 
Wow. I called him a coward, too. I asked him to go in the box with me numerous times. I said, you want to debate? Let's debate. He won't do it. Remember when it all came back, when it all started with Fran? Do yep. you remember that, Rudy? Yep. You remember how he called her a coward because she wouldn't go in the box with him? Remember that? Well, she won a call. What she just said that the whole thing was because Fran said in the beginning when Randy started attacking, she did not even know who the fuck for uh, Randy was. She'd seen him on social media, but Randy thinks he's this god, and everybody knows him. Everybody worships him. She knew who Randy was because she knew he was going to Georgia, and that's when I got screwed and started lying about Hatcher. She knew who she, oh, no. That's when all the Hatcher lies started, and that makes me mad because I told him numerous times that the story he's telling was false, that I was the one in the office, I was the one dealing with it, not Hatcher. And he kept blaming it on Hatcher, blaming it on Hatcher. It had nothing to do with Hatcher. Nothing. Nothing. It was all me. And it was because but, Brian was supposed to show up. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's when Fran didn't. Well, I was talking about before that. I, I didn't. I, I won't talk. You were talking about something different. I was talking about when I was involved with Fran and he first started attacking. And Fran then had no clue who he was. Uh, he just came out of the blue and started attacking. Um, and I, I tried to explain to her that, yeah, this guy's been going after me for X amount of years. Then he started attacking. Uh, uh, what was that guy's name? Uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, no, cause he attacks everybody. It's hard to keep track. Yeah, I can't keep up. I mean, he attacked everybody in that group. All of us that was in uh, Punish for Protecting, uh, he went after. They were either sovereign oh, citizens. Oh, the one from uh, Virginia. Pu- um, the guy from Virginia. Um, um, I know who you're talking about. I know who you're talking. What is his name? Um, oh my gosh! Am I right? The one from Virginia, the one that was right atta- in the uh, Well, it's Slavin. He attacked Slavin. He attacked uh, Jose. He attacked. Uh, let's see, uh, Harlot. He attacked. Uh, he attacked everybody. I mean, he attacked everybody. Well, uh, that's he attacked because- Hatcher. Anybody that has a different opinion than him is wrong. He wants control of everybody's mind and everybody's, you know, outlook on things, and he can't control it. And the minute he realizes he can't control it, he gets upset. Now, see, here's the thing. You've known Randy for a while. I've known Randy and Melissa for four years. I became really good friends with Melissa. I've been to their home. I've been, I've been to the farm. I've been out there. I met the chicken named Fran. If that tells you anything, I've been there. Yeah. He knows I know way too much. Little does he know there would be things that would happen. Melissa would be on the phone with me and have it behind her back. I heard everything. There were times when I would be like, Melissa, like, you got to go. Like, get out of there. But how do you say that to somebody you care about and know that they love that person? You know, it, it's a domestic violence situation. And if anybody knows domestic violence, getting those women out of those situations, it's not easy. It's hard. And for a woman to say, I'm going out, I mean, it took her a good month of being here to realize that she was in a good place. She was scared. Is he going to come here? And then he starts threatening to come here. And then it's ridiculous. It's hard. And I know, and he knows I know way too much. Way too much. That's why he's attacking me. He thinks he's going to shut me up, and I'm not going to shut up. You can't be an advocate and do the things you're doing. You know, well, you can't be a decent she, human being. You can't be a decent human being and do what he's doing. Key right. words. She was well. She was threatened with her kids. I mean, he told he told her I I can I don't record my phone calls because that's not who I am. It, it's it's just not who I am. I don't have a reason to. Either you believe me or you don't. But he on the phone times with her where he would say, go ahead and do that. I can take the kids. I can make it so you never see your kids again. Where are you going to take your kids? If you leave me, you ain't got a house. You ain't got nothing. 
where are you going to take your kids? You ain't going to get your kids. Just like the time she confirmed them about the Adderall. And she threw the pills out in the yard. I was on the phone. I was on video call with her when that happened. You want to talk about a pissed off guy? And then she had to call all the pediatrics, call the freaking Walgreens, and tell them he's not allowed to pick up pills anymore. Let me, let me ask you this, and we know this. When all this started, everybody was attacking my friend about how she was taken from Sebastian, right? She dropped off the truck. So he was at his appointment, summer school. He's supposed to be in summer school. He can't get his license until he graduates. Paper. He's supposed to be in therapy. He's supposed to be on medication, and you guys have heard it. And I wish I had the clip for it. I wish I would have gotten it for it. But he's straight out said he's not autistic. Last time I checked, Randy's not a doctor. He hasn't had him in therapy. He hasn't had him in summer school. He hasn't done anything for this kid but take him to the beach. What is that doing for this child? What is this doing for this kid? Nothing. He's got him burning his mama's stuff. He's got him talking trash about his mama. And this is everything this man fights against. Is it not, Rudy? Yeah, well, it's, 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 what, it's what he proclaimed. Another key word, since we're bringing up, you know, patterns here, Randy proclaims he's a self-proclaimed chief of the Indian tribe that was extinct back in the 1800s. He's a self-proclaimed uh, licensed stockbroker that we He's a self-proclaimed and cannot... idiot, what he is. Yeah, everything he does, he... Last night, me and Melissa was on here, and the first thing he tells Melissa, well, do you know so-and-so from Fox News, and do you know so-and-so from this and that? They sat down at my table, and they gave me a job as a writer with blah, 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 blah. Why has everything with him have to be, it can't, it can't be, it's like if if he was a grass cutter. He's what you call a one-upper. Yeah, he wouldn't be, yep, he wouldn't say, hey, I'm going to cut your grass for $50. He's going to call you and say, hey, well, look, you know, I might have to get every penny I can get out of you, but. You know, my lawnmower costs ten thousand dollars. Have you been not to cut you off or anything? I'm sorry, but have you seen those articles he's wrote at all from WRAL? Have you seen them or? No, 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 no. I seen, I seen the actual, I seen the actual interview, and the interview okay. was just where they sat down. They sat down, and and when I talk, I, and I actually talked to WRAL because me and him was beefing and. You know, I seen who done, who was the reporter, and I called, and I told him I had some information on the story. And I said, look, I said, are you aware that this story y'all just ran, that y'all are going to probably do a recap on, you are aware that this is this man's cousin slash girlfriend? And the guy kind of chuckled a little bit, and he said, you've got to be fucking kidding. I said, call, I said no. Call the sheriff's department uh, in Sampson County. Call anybody in Sampson County. Um, and then it was funny. They never aired Randy's part two of that. Uh, they never aired, and I tried to bring that up last night. That okay, was strictly a, a conflict. Here, here, here's, a, here's another thing that was thrown at me. Um, where's the articles from the American Spirit Foundation? The late Stan Lee and Will Smith and Marvel Comics. You know, where's all those uh, articles that he uh, was in? Or that, you know, where are those? Because he claimed that, too. Well, so well like, I, I think, like, like, I told, like I told Melissa today, uh, you know, uh, he claims... When I was researching him back in the day, he claimed that he was a 33rd degree Mason. That's as high any Mason can ever get in their career. Well, that's awesome because okay. my, grand, my great-grandfather was a master Mason, and my great-grandmother was head of the Eastern Star in Michigan. So I, I highly doubt that. Well, my, well my, dad, my dad is, I don't know what degree, he's a master Mason, but he's... 
And my dad had told me straight off that a Mason cannot tell a non-Mason. They can tell them they're a master of Mason, but you can't tell I, them what degree. I can you can't tell you them on my which headstone. It's on their headstone. <clears throat> yeah, but you can't tell. You may be able to put it on your headstone when you're dead, but while you are alive, you cannot tell a non-Mason what your degree is. Um, you know, my dad's a Mason. My stepmom sits on the North Carolina board for the Women's Eastern Star uh, board of uh, directors. So um, you understand it, too. Yes, and the thing about it is Randy claims he served he served under the George Washington uh, Masonic Lodge. Well, if you type in Masonic or George Washington Masonic Lodge, that is a tourist attraction. That is where people go when they see where George okay, Washington. Yeah, yeah. When him and Melissa were supposed to get married, she contacted the Eastern Star, and they've never heard of them. No shit. At all. Wow. No records. Nothing, because when you marry a Mason, I mean, you become part of the Eastern Star, just like my great-grandmother. I could go into the Eastern Star if I wanted to, because I went from my great-grandmother and my grandmother to me, because I'm the oldest, and I chose not to. But there is always records, and if you call and try to find records, and they say there's absolutely no records, then there's no records. I mean, you can't get around that. I don't understand why he keeps pulling these things out. I mean, he's trying to be something he's not, is he... I think he's, like, delusional or something. Like, he's a But as an advocate, he's not an advocate. He's somebody that, that likes the drama, likes to get on. He, he's got an addiction to Facebook. He's got an addiction to attention. And, you know, I just don't see any point in it anymore. He's going to call people out. I hope that, you know, I hope, I hope that you and I and Melissa with all this and whoever else to call in, you know, really get what's on. I mean, I, I think they seem to, I don't know, like, it's like being in love. Like, you're so in love, you don't see the red flag, you know, until it's too late. And I don't know. I'm just, I don't get any of it. I don't get any of it. Well, well, it all makes perfect sense to me. Uh, we, we are dealing with a, we are dealing with a psychopath that is a that has level three but narcissistic traits. Even though you he know, was the man himself. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a madman. man. He is a danger to himself, and he is a danger. To society, he should not be nowhere around children or parents, it's especially children or parents that have been harmed or that are hurting. Because he's not there to help; he's only there to get what he can get out of the situation. And he wants to be pre- He's like one of these preachers you see on TV that's in this big church. And they're driving the Ferrari around. They're, they're living in the house with the gold toilets. And, you know, they're saying, give me the money. Give me the money. Give me the money. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like he says. His kids are off limits, but he can he can go off on other people's kids. I mean, he doesn't think. You want to put all this stuff out about me and my kids' cases. Don't you think that's going to affect my kids? But yeah. they call, you know, that's, you know it, look what did you before Look anything. what he did to Melissa. Look what he did to Melissa's kid. Uh, well, yeah. And that, that's a real, kid, that's a real special needs kid. Um, this kid didn't not, act like not, this before this happened. He was a good kid. <laughs> he was a good kid. Yeah. What? What? Sebastian just. Sebastian has learning disabilities. Uh, you know, Melissa's son actually has. You know, severe, severe disability. And it, that's Randy the gonna, point I'm trying Randy to make. Is going to call in tonight? Is he going to call in tonight? No. Is he going to uh, get the box with us? Mm, no, he's not calling no. in, I'm sure. But you guys were talking about, you know, what he's done to kids and, you know. I know 
some of the stuff that he's done when he did that blast on me and my family. And I am going to play this little clip for you guys, and we'll see what you think about this. Hang on. It's so nuts. Troy's son is sent into foster care. Her son is sent into the custody of her mother, who's still taking care of this family. And I mean in more ways than one. They got a shed out back, but they want to roach up with mom. Mom was retired. She should be living the time of her life and enjoying it. But Melissa Foster and her husband are dragging him down. Matter of fact, recently, the word is that, it, that the mother paid over $20,000 in child support in the last four months in order to get all that child support we just read, to get that freed off Troy's back because he doesn't work. And Melissa Foster doesn't work. She draws a check. And her son draws a check. She didn't always have her son. At a time, when she pulled whatever she pulled and was charged to a criminal child abuse. Not only was Troy's child, the little boy, sent into foster care, her son was sent over to be with her mother, and her mother got custody. Later on, her mother gave custody back, but the state didn't want her child to be there. What about the other two children? Here's what we know. We know that the other two children, and Melissa will tell you she's very proud of how she raised them and everything else, is lies. Those fathers of them two children, a boy and a girl, and we won't even name them, but they they went to be productive members of society. And the reason why is because whenever they removed the other two from Melissa Foster, they removed those two and they went to the fathers. They went to their fathers and their fathers raised them, and the dads ought to get credit for it because... This wasn't a deadbeat dad. This was a criminal mother that was charged with criminal activity and a, lived with a criminal, a convicted felon. There's so many Thank lies you. in just that one no. minute and 54 seconds. Now, hang on. I'm going I'm to go to defense here on this, on this part right here. Okay. First of all, um, my husband didn't owe $20,000 in child support. He won his appellate court case against that. It's actually his ex owes him money. Randy has no idea about nothing. And then he's saying, you know, that, oh, you know, uh, Troy's son went to foster care. Well, you know, naturally, they split up all my kids when I got the charges, right? And they wouldn't give my stepson to my mom. They wanted him in foster care. Okay, and I'm going to I'm going to say this. Um, the reason that all this went down with my charges is my stepson was very sick. He was found in a meth lab in Georgia after he had been missing for almost a year. When they were in that meth lab, found in that meth lab, there was dirty diapers, feces everywhere in like a, a, a closet of a mobile home. The children were eating dog food. This child came from a severe environment where these children were trying to survive in their environment. So when we spent over $12,500 and we actually got him out of foster care in Georgia, when he came to our home, we had a lot of problems. But we had a court order that was a temporary order. And when you come with a child from one state to the other through interstate compact, at the time, the laws were, that we had to sit there and wait for 180 days before we could even get him help. So my sister and my brother-in-law, my sister was a school teacher and my brother-in-law was a principal of the elementary school. They suggested that Troy and I put my stepson in uh, uh, pre-K. Uh, they said the teachers in the schools could assess and evaluate and that they could get the help that he needed because he needed, like, serious um psychological help. Well, when I started realizing every, there was a lot of things going on with him, I ordered the records from Georgia because he was harming himself. He would throw himself backwards in the floor and just go wailing on himself during temper tantrums. They were bad. And so I ordered those records and when we sent him for his first day at school. There was a teacher's aide that actually sat him down on the floor, and she was like, hey, how did you get these bruises? Because he had three bruises the size of nickels, quarters, and dimes. But I was charged with permanently lame serious disfigurement for life. 
they charged me with that because he said, Mommy beats me up a hand in a rag. That's what's on the record. Well, guess what? I was not his mother. Okay? When we went, they took all my children from school. When the social worker called me and said they were taking my kids, you know, I was like, hey, I got a bunch of paperwork I think you need to look at. And I I had been calling those uh, ladies at social services asking for help with him. And they're the ones that said that we couldn't do anything until he was actually a citizen and at 180 80 days. So you ask here's help. what happened. They, they you took ask him help from us. They make you look bad. They wouldn't even look at his paperwork, Amanda. They wouldn't even look at nothing that we had. They had a police officer right. there when we showed up with the paperwork, and he already had our charges there. And whenever I read the charges where it said, Mommy beats me up her hand in a rag, I slid it back out across the desk at the cop and said, Which mommy is he talking about? And as soon as I said that, the social workers in the hallway, I could hear them say it. There's two mommies. There's another mommy. They had no idea. So then, you know, they press these charges. They split up the kids. I'm sitting there, you know, uh, with criminal charges. It was devastating. It was absolutely devastating. They got the wrong mother. But anyway, so I had to wait for the adjudication. I'm like, we'll figure it all out there. We have an opportunity there. Well, guess what? Because I had pending criminal charges in a higher court, my lawyers were like, you can't say anything here in family court. You can't say anything. You can't cough up your criminal case in the family court because you're looking at all these years. Okay. Now, when the social workers testified, they testified three three bruises the size of nickels, quarters, and dimes. But again, I was charged with permanently laying serious disfigurement. No different if I had put gasoline on him and set him on fire. I mean, the charge was ridiculous in itself, but that's how hard they come oh, at Melissa, you and they don't know. Because, you know, Randy's going to take that clip and use it to his advantage. Be really well, careful. No. You were uh, I'm, I'm going to, but I'm telling the truth here. This is what's I'm in my saying, criminal case. You know, but, here's, and well, it, but here's 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 what happened during that adjudication hearing. You know, um, I had my attorneys to ask how he was doing in foster care, and they said he was fine. And I was like, I got my pocketbook, handed out a picture to my attorney, and I said, see if that's the child they have. She looked at the picture. She said, yeah, that's him. And there's nothing going on with him. And she said, no, nothing at all. Everything's going great. He's perfect. And I stood up and I said, they're lying. And they were lying. There was um, uh, – when I knew that they were lying and they were committing perjury – uh, my attorneys filed for everything through the state. And right there, in black and white, we found paperwork that where the foster care parents were having the same problems that the foster care parents in Georgia had that I was having. They were having the same problems out of him. So they lied on the stand. I mean, these people are ridiculous. But anyway, when everything went to court, and we had a competency hearing. You know, there, he had no knowledge of abuse in the home. He asked, you know, well, what did Melissa do to you? He said, she helped me tie, teach me how to tie my shoes. Uh, she taught me colors. You know, I mean, he had no knowledge of abuse. And that's why everything was thrown out of court finally. But to Randy, you know, I've lost all of my children. I never raised my children. It's bullshit. It's complete and total oh, right. bullshit. And then he accredits it to the fathers. Now, hang on. He says in that clip, and he's going to have to prove this in court when we go to court, because, Randy, you said every bit of this was the truth. It's the gospel. You had it all, you and Maria. You fucking liar. Let me tell you something. My son, okay, all of my kids, I never lost my kids. My son was given back to me with a court order. My other son was given back to me in a court order. Elizabeth, my daughter, I was able to get uh, uh, joint custody of because I had sole custody of her before this shit started, okay? The, through and by our divorce, he filed during this horrible situation I was in, and I couldn't do anything because he's actually a good parent, okay? And then Troy's son went to Georgia. But do you know what, Randy? Georgia wanted to give him back to us, and we couldn't 
taking. You know why? You know why? Well, I'm not going to give everything to you. You can dig on that shit a minute. But let me tell you something. Randy says in that clip that my son was given back to the fathers, you know, that the children were given back to their fathers. Let me tell you something, Randy. My son, Cody, has not even seen his father in over 15 years. He was never given back to him. And guess what? He never saw him either for over 15 years. Okay? The alleged victim was that's four that's years that's old. That's 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 He's 24 years old now. But this is so pressing. This was the shit that Randy threw to try to destroy me. Half through misinformation. But hang on. Hang on. And then, and then he wants to sell my story. Okay? He wants to sell it. Okay? Now, hang on. Because we're going to talk about all this. Listen to this clip. This is this is in the video that I'm taking to North Carolina. This is going to get you, Randy. Here it is. In there. But TeamRevitUp.com, T-E-A-M-R-E-V-I-T-U-P.com. If y'all aren't going there, and Team Rev It Up on YouTube. I need as many subscribers as I can get. Right there. That's what it's all about, the money. He wants to trash people. Oh, I got something. I got an exposure piece on somebody. And guess what? Subscribe to my channel so I can make money off the bullshit and lies that I'm uh, supposedly exposing on people. Yeah, but Melissa, I mean, that's what it's all about. He's going to try to give them my money. story and make money right. off of his depiction of what happened right. in my case. And I have a huge problem right. with it. But the people that give him money thrive on drama. You have to remember that. Like he said, I lost all my kids, right? Well, here, here's a little shout-out, Randy, to you. First of all, yeah, my oldest daughter was taken from her dad. I fought for three freaking years. And me and her dad never had a relationship and come to terms that his aunt was going to adopt her. I'm sorry things didn't turn out. Yeah, we have a bit of a rocky relationship. That's on her. I respect that. I backed off. My second daughter, I had a business. I had all kinds of stuff going. We divorced. I lost everything. Instead of struggling with my kid, I let him have custody. We actually went to the divorce together, signed the papers. I didn't pay child because we opted out of it. Okay? And guess what? I see my kid. She's an adult. She's about ready to get married. I'm doing all kinds of wedding stuff with her. Now, my youngest child, he says I got a fake profile that I communicate with my child on. Okay? We communicate through cell phones. There's no reason. We, If you look at my court order, I've sent it to everybody. We have open communication. I paid almost $100,000 for an attorney to take care of that. I have sole physical legal oh. joint custody of my child and he wants to throw it out there that i lost all my kids i didn't lose my kids i made a choice as a mother with my oldest two to not have some struggle with me because i went through a really bad time in my life i didn't have good parents i moved out at 15 i worked my ass off i got my ged i had a child young I, I did things that were best for my kids because i didn't want them to like it was my well, and if he just wants to hold that over my head and add things, let him. I made well, a better me, choice for my children. Well, and he wants to act like I didn't raise my kids. My kids went somewhere for a minute, but the, you know, the rest of the twenty some years, hello, I've been here. You know, so here's I've, I've helped I get have them uh, uh, breakfast up, up for school. You know, the whole nine yards. I mean, I don't know what, what he's, he's, he's even right. talking about. It's he's ridiculous. My ex-husband. He's trying to call my ex-husband. Go for it. Call him. Call him. Hey, hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Can I throw something in before I forget? Absolutely, okay, let me, let, We love it when you let talk. Me, all right. Let me bring up two valid points. Okay. Yes, sir. I'm glad, I'm glad y'all brought this up, and y'all probably don't even realize y'all brought it up. I'm going to bring up one thing, and then I'm going to bring up, the second thing, and then I want y'all to give me a reaction to what I just said. Okay, Randy, when you're kissing his ass or you're you're a monetary value to him, you're giving him money, you're the best person in the world. Whatever you oh, did no. in your past, whatever you did in your past, it don't matter. 
But the he second, said it. The, he said it with numerous very, people. He don't care if you're gay, straight. He don't care if you drink. He don't care about drugs. He don't care about nothing. If you're on his side, but, he said it. Yep. But Rudy, the only the thing second, I did was I quit. I quit paying for the Zoom account. I cut him off with all that, and I unfriended him and the rest of them. And this is what I got for it. Okay. That's the, it's like that's I'm the point. It's other people. It's ridiculous. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, like, let's let's get on this, let, y'all. Let me finish this. Okay. All right. So look, Melissa now, Randy's Melissa Mack. Let's let's call her Melissa Mack. Melissa Mack. For five years, Melissa was this outstanding mom. She was this outstanding person. She was someone right. that Randy invested twenty four hours a day of his life. He invested right. all this money that he had to burn for right. people. But the second she breaks up. She's a piece of shit, dead, dead mom. She, she's on meth. She's on this. She's on that. Now, Amanda's a piece of shit. Now, now Melissa, that's, that's on here now, Melissa and her husband was paying for his blog talk. But the second they started oh, paying for the blog talk. Shit. Wait a minute. Ruby, Tim Catfish more than once. So, sure. now, and I'm not saying I don't, I don't want anybody to take that the wrong way. Uh, I, I, you know, Gemma kind of came out with her own thing and kind of came clean about things. That's her thing. You know, me and Melissa, we have a different kind of perspective on it. You know, you need to forgive and forget. I'm not one to hold grudges. I don't give a shit. Okay. I get her right. point of view. And I have had this conversation. I get her point of view. She was literally steps away from getting all her kids. So I see her point of view. She's angry. She's very angry. But Randy had a part in that, too. So now that that she's not in love with Randy and he's not getting millions of dollars and flying on that private jet with champagne in their hand, now she's a piece of shit. Tony's a piece of shit. All these people, whether it's a fake profile or not, I don't care point is, that's a pattern, and that was what we talked about in the beginning of this. It's a pattern. You don't see that as, a, as somebody that likes Randy or follows Randy or believes it. If you don't see this, then you're part of the problem. It's not just Randy. See, I don't have, I have one sign account, and I sold it to buy my friend a car so she can get to and from work every day. I never, I, I never thought in my wildest dreams, come to me and say, I'm one of Randy's biggest enemies. Can I buy that account from you for this much money? And let me tell you, it's enough to buy her a nice car for cash. Mm. I'll tell you that. All right, that's awesome. That's that's that's, that's beautiful. No, that's when people are doing what they're supposed to do. It's Let me amazing tell y'all something. that there's people out there that hate him so much. And here's another thing. Let me let me bring this up. I just put a on me because my lawyer told me I had this this much out there. Um, he doesn't have any friends in the system. No matter what he does or what he says, he has no friends in the system. He says he has an attorney. His attorney's out of Alabama. And she has no record of being able to practice in Michigan. She has no record of being able to practice in North Carolina. She has no record of being able to practice anywhere. Plus, she's a GAL. So why would you have a friend that's a GAL, which is somebody you fight against? Hey, okay. I have friends here in the system. My husband calls with the sheriff, like three or four of the sheriffs here. Um, I... I know what's going on in my life. I don't have anything to hide. Nothing. But this guy yesterday that I spoke to, he said, yep, he's got a server. Even if you're serving any paperwork, he's got this supposed Zoom meeting. He's still got a server with court paperwork. Days are counting down. I think we're down to seven days at this point. Is it eight? Let's see. When did he get served? When did he get served? Five days ago? I can't. It's been, it's been a week because it was a Monday or Tuesday. So he, he's he's counting down. So he's got to serve her within seven days of the hearing. 
since there's been nobody here to serve her. I know the sheriff. The, the freaking house would call me and be like, hey, I'm showing up paperwork. Okay. <laughs> he did mention in his live yesterday, Amanda, that he got certified mail and that she would ge- be getting his certified mail. Yeah, he, uh, got, he, got, he got served certified and he got served by the sheriff's department. See, the sheriff's department had the paperwork first. Because we faxed it to him. And and what is the law there in Michigan about the return on that? Um, the minute that she signs for it, it's served. But here's okay. the thing, too, is, uh, okay, now that we have this new Delta variant with the coronavirus, blah, 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 so now the courts are kind of going, you know, back into the, because it's government, you know, they got to go back on the, the Zoom and all this shit, but... The the rest of the stuff still still stands. He's got to serve her. He hasn't served her. If he tries to play a game and say, just like all his people were saying, oh, don't accept it, don't take it, don't do this, if she don't serve you, what he don't realize is all she'd have to do is try to serve him three times, and the minute he don't accept it, it's an automatic default. Yeah. You know, he thinks that anybody up here can get a DVPO. It's not like that. There's laws in place for women. She, he thinks he knows the evidence that she put in. All he got was a paragraph saying, I had to flee from North Carolina. And I was out there. I had to flee from North Carolina. They don't know what she put in there because we asked the judge not to attach it in fear of retaliation. Yeah. He has no idea. He can have all the witnesses in the world. It's hearsay. <laughs> We're not like North Carolina. Uh, Amanda, let me bring up something you say. All kinds of stuff out. They they black it out. They redact it to where you can't see everything. That's how we do it in our state. And I know, well, you can't and I, and I know it's, this to be a oh, let me say something real quick. I know this to be a fact. Yes, dear. When my ex-wife fled with my children and I had custody, first thing that was asked, if she would have fled due to domestic violence or in fear for her life or something like that, and she had custody of the kids, they told me that it was special laws that when a person has to actually flee from a state to another state, I forgot what they called it, my attorney in Washington yes, was telling it me. Is, it's called the uh, Domestic Violence Women's Act, and I, I yes. am not sure if that's the right name for it, but it is federal, and he keeps saying, oh, they can't do anything in North Carolina. If you look at oh, this, bullshit. and I sent it to you, Melissa. You need to look on a federal level there. Yes, I sent it to you, Melissa. They checked every box. He can't have firearms. It even says on there that he is a harm to her children. And he has taken her children and completed custody interference. And her ex is actually involved in that. So, therefore, she has a case. And somebody that says they're so smart and all this stuff, has no idea what the hell they're talking about. None. Right. It's just like right. this shitty post to me from 2015. One, it was my sister. Dude, I'll tell you the story. I was sitting on top of her ass with my knees on her arms so she couldn't take her long ass nails and scratch the shit out of me. And I was telling her if I'd get off her when she stopped and a neighbor called the cops. You know why she didn't show up to court? Because she's my sister. Yeah. Well, look. Yeah. The other thing I was talking about I want to talk about. Okay. When I first got involved with Randy and others, they did not like me because on my radio show, I brought a lot of moms and grandmoms. Okay. Randy and Neil said that they were part of, they were trying to get with the father's rights movement, and I was pissing a lot of dads off. Because I was standing up for these sorry ass fucking women. Um, Cause okay. it's not a dad thing; it's a mom and dad. There's no sex to well, it. Well, well, but wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a wait a minute! Now, now you listen to that video she just played a while ago. Every video when Randy talks about, notice every time Randy gets pissed off at somebody, ninety nine percent of the time he's pissed off at a female, and what's the very first thing he does? He contacts their, yes, he contacts the dad, and then like he just said on the clip Here, that Melissa you, played. I'll give you my own sound clip, Rudy. I'll give you my own sound clip. 
That's my coffee cup. I need more coffee. All right. But his exact words are always, Team Revit Up stepped in, and we got the kids back with the good dad. These kids are thriving in life. These kids are He ain't got nobody and... back. He ain't, he, the only thing he talks about is his own case, because that's the only thing he can talk about. He ain't got no kids back. Melissa had custody of her kids before she even got with Randy. But you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying he's a... Uh, he is a scam he, artist. He's a, a, a scam... You can't even... Uh, he's a scam artist. He's a lazy piece of shit dude that hasn't done anything in 15 years. He's a wannabe military veteran that he's never going to be. His daughter, and I'm going to bring this up. Let's bring up his kids because he likes to bring up my kids. Let's bring up. Let's see. Cheyenne was charged with a possession of marijuana. Uh, Yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. No, I didn't yeah. Know. Having a husband for a PI is an awesome thing. Uh, she was charged with a possession of marijuana. Daddy tried to cover that up. Um, she's on OnlyFans. You know, she wears wigs. That freaking video she was in, she's wearing a wig. Why do you wear a wig? Why? Why wear a wig? Um, she's divorced because her husband that she was married from. 30 a.m. and so drunk and claimed she was raped. She wasn't. She was forced to close on bag. You're breaking up, Amanda. Oh, shit. Can you hear me now? I can now, yeah. yeah. You want to repeat okay. some of that? Um, His, his daughter's uh, working at the clubs in Fayetteville. She's working in the clubs. Um, she got divorced because her husband had to pick her up from base at 2 a.m. wasted and claimed that she got raped. She didn't get raped. You know, I mean, he he wants to throw all this shit out there, and he says, don't bring my kids into it, but he brings his own kids into it, and then he brings other kids into it, and, you know, it's kind of a contradiction. So if you're... Right. It's like... if you can't take the heat, stay the hell out of the kitchen. Don't uh-huh. talk about it. So, you know, he's just burning his own ass. And then he gets pissed off because people, you know, are going to call it out. We're going to call you out on your lies. You're gonna, we're going to call you out on your bullshit. And, you know, it is how it is. Ask Grady how he makes a living. He doesn't I know. work. He doesn't have a job. And, uh, you know, I he, granted, I've been married. No, my he brings us up all the time. My husband's married eight times. I'm his eighth wife. whoop he fucking do You know what? He ain't the first person to say it. He probably ain't going to be the last. My husband spent 24 years in the military. He divorced every one of his wives. And you know what for? Cheating. Mm-hmm. He, never, he never beat them. There was never any... Uh, that, that, that's divorce. pretty common in the military. I mean, you know, lots it of is. soldiers go divorce off overseas and and right. the divorce you know, come home and, and their wives are with other other guys. Yeah. But here, here's the other thing. Let me bring this up because this kind of pertains to his daughter, Cheyenne. I was with my husband in Germany. I was with my husband through the first Afghan war. And uh, he went to the second Afghan war, which is when we split up because he thought he wasn't going to come back. But uh, let me tell you something about the military. A lot of these guys, they marry their friends and they pay them so they can have off-base housing, the BAH, they can get the COLA. And that ain't no lie. You talk to any military guy, they'll tell you the same thing. So as far as we know, I am supposed new fiance could be anybody. We don't know. An 82nd Airborne? Uh, anybody can be an 82nd Airborne. He's young. What's his rank? Nobody said his rank. What's his rank? Is he an NCO? Is he a first sergeant? Is he a staff sergeant? Is he a private? Is he? What is he? What is he? And how's he got 
by that ring. Just saying. I'm just saying. And let me tell you something else. A lot of soldiers, they find the strippers, they find the escorts, and that's exactly what they do. I'll pay you $100, $400 a month. I'll give you TRICARE. I'll give you all these things. You just marry me so I can live off base. It's not uncommon. I'm just saying. Yeah. People that know the military know this shit. But you know, well, here's, here's it, the point of the marriage thing. It, it's none of Randy's business, but he throws that stuff out there. And it's just none of his he, business. I want to know. I want to see, I want to see the employee of the month for the car dealership. Because you go to all the car dealerships in Fayetteville, all of them. I've been to all of them. They all post their employee of the month, their bio, how they've done, everything. There's not one of Cheyenne. Not one. Not one. Not one. Not one. But, you know, Amanda, you know, whenever I was podcasting with Randy and stuff, I I, I never knew that he had uh, three ex-wives until – after I stopped podcasting with him, and then I found that out. So he's accused right. me of, you know, I, not disclosing this, that, or the other with him. But he didn't with me I, either, I, you know. So, I mean, I, what, what's the difference? But you don't go around telling people about all of his marriages, does he? No. And those oh, women, course, from what I understand, have a lot to say about how they were treated woman. as wives. He's a woman beater. He's a woman eater and a woman beater. And I'll tell you what, I witnessed it for four years with Melissa, and I didn't say nothing until she was ready to go. When she finally said, I'm done, and left. And then she left, and she went to the first place, and he found out where she was at, and he went there with a pistol. And then she went from the place she was at, and she he found out where she was, and I got her out of there fast enough before shit happened there. Yeah, he's more he's angry. He doesn't Jackson like me because he knows I know too much. My husband Troy just stepped in the podcast and he's got something Hi, to Troy. say here. They said, Hey, hey Troy. Hey, What's up, Troy? What's up? <laughs> now, what'd you say, Troy? I said, He's more than welcome to come Kentucky. If he ain't got the gas <laughs> money, I'll send it to him. <laughs> Man, oh, yeah, man. Troy, you he invited him over to his camper last night, yeah. and my old man's yeah. like, you know, oh, he's invited uh, here. He can come. Troy, Rudy. send him the gas money. Oh, we'll send him a I, bus ticket if he question. wants to come. I have a question for Rudy. Rudy. Yo. Is your camper able to be hooked up by any chance? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I got, I got, uh, I got a, uh. I got a, le- I got electric hitch on the front. I've got uh, two axles on it. Uh, yeah. All right. my, my, Can somebody yeah, come my... in in the middle of the night and just hook up your shit and go, or are you protected by anything? I've got my, I've got my guard dog out there. Uh, All right. So why don't yeah. you hook that shit up and come up here and visit? Well, right now I don't have nothing. Uh, I've got this little hybrid escape. Uh, I don't even. <laughs> I don't even know if that's got a fight. It's, 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 I don't know if it's well, a the fourth reason, on. The reason, I, the reason I bring this up is because a little birdie told me that uh, somebody was going to hook up your trailer and they were going to haul oh, you yeah. off to the desert. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 that was put, I, I was actually going through my Facebook today on, on the old phone and I said, damn, I got accounts I forgot about. And I looked yeah. at, I logged into the Rooster account. The Russo or account, and Randy had uh, Randy had uh, posted some stuff on my Russo page, and was you know it was people talking about uh, hooking up to my camper and uh, them taking me to the desert with me inside yeah. of my camper. I don't know if they was insinuating uh, committing murder or plotting murder or, um, but, but I, I don't know. You know, doesn't that kind of scare you? I mean, wouldn't you be kind of afraid that, hey, if I go to bed at night, if somebody can hook me up? I mean, you're obviously, obviously. I mean, I, I've had campers. You're going to feel it's it if like somebody hooks up. You can't get off the shitter long enough to do anything. That, no. Oh, oh. I mean, Rudy, yeah. ain't got, Rudy ain't got nothing to worry about. Neither do I, because uh, he wouldn't come up here and visit me and do talk I? to me like a man. He won't sure come talk I. to me man to man. I'll talk with him. 
Well, I, I just like just like the paperwork I sent him on my on my oldest child. I said, you know, here you go, sunshine. I said, why don't you call me in the box? Uh, you know, I don't call him names. You know, well, you know what? what you, you know, I was raised by. I was raised by my grandparents, and my grandfather always told me, if you got a man, if you got a man threatening to whoop your ass. Tell him about whooping your ass. You got a man telling you he's going to do this, he's going to do that. My granddad told me, you don't worry about that man. You worry about that right. man that, that ain't saying shit to you. You worry That's about right. that man that ain't putting anything he's doing out there. That's the motherfucker you worry about. You worry about so, that person that's quiet and just disappeared. That's who so you here's worry the about. Bottom line. Here's the bottom line to Randy. Uh, here's what he is. I'll say it. I don't give a shit. He can come up here all day long. He can come on my property. I don't give a shit. Yeah, bad for him. But here's the thing. He he talks a lot of shit. And he That's thinks he's he God. Well, he he thinks he's God. He says he fights against the system, system then he becomes yeah. God to the system. Like, he plays the system. That's what he is. He's got a tin cup that, tin cup that he holds out. And he says... Give me, give me, give me. And that's another thing I want to bring up real quick. I'm I'm, I'm kind of touch on this. I've known Melissa for four years, okay? I remember when Sebastian walked to get to her, right? Kid that has a horrible parent and thinks they're a piece of shit doesn't walk 17 miles to get to their mama. I've seen right. the shoes, clothes. I've seen the electronics. I've seen Melissa. Listen, let me tell you something. This woman, she will, I have two kids here. One's autistic, and I have another child here with a veteran friend that lives with us right now. He's trying to sell his house and buy another house. And I'll tell you something. This this woman, she will give her last dollar to these kids to make sure that they're happy. Mm-hmm. So I know she does that for her own kids. I know she did that for Randy. And when he sits back and tries to bash her and says she didn't do nothing, Randy hasn't had a job. Melissa has. Melissa had many jobs. You know why she quit McDonald's? Because he made fun of her. It's not wow. a joke anymore. She thinks this is a joke anymore. She's paid his taxes two years in a row. You know why she didn't pay the third year or he didn't let her? Because he found out that anybody who pays taxes on something for three years in a row, it's automatically there. Mm. I hope wow. I hope this house goes at one dollar. Because nobody <laughs> else wants a piece of property where hog shit runs into. His well's fifteen feet deep. It's horrible. He refuses to get a water sample because he knows it'll be condemned. Let me tell you some I know so much about that property, it ain't funny. It's disgusting. He's a disgusting, <laughs> disgusting. And anything that you or I or, or um, sorry, Melissa or Rudy or anybody else have to say, we can all put out the truth. Randy's going to yeah. find something to twist. To keep yeah, yeah. He'll twist this right here, too. I mean, the, yeah, that, you know, this 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 podcast right here, he'll, he'll, he'll hear it. And he's probably listening to it now, but I don't really give a shit. Oh, well. But uh, oh, well. he'll twist it, too, just like he does everything else. I hope he's sitting on the toilet right now shitting his brains out. I'm so glad that, you know, he thinks he knows everything. He's God. He's God. God yeah. told him that me and Melissa are lesbians. Remember? Yeah. Lesbians. <sighs> you know what Randy is pissed off about with me? One, I know too much. Two, like, something dollars worth of cars between us. Three, I own half a million dollars in acreage in a house and four, he couldn't fucking touch what he wanted to. And I'm not one to brag about what I have. But he could only wish he has what I have. He could only wish that he was in the position I am. I made fucking mistakes and I woke up and I learned my lessons and I moved forward. It's called therapy. It's called taking care of myself spiritually and mentally. You're not you're not human if you don't make mistakes. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? I'm gonna Mr. Shoot for a second because he's a good guy. 
And then to go back to the double jeopardy thing, people make mistakes, right? Randy likes to bring up, you know, your convictions and all this shit, but he doesn't ever show the charges, ever. And so what? You know, oh, well, yeah. it's like in our, in our case, you know, I mean, uh, he's he's got all my, the the mug shots from the arrest and and all that, but right, he doesn't right. have any proof. Or nothing about that they nailed me with that shit. Where's the outcome, Randy? Yeah, where's the outcome, Randy? Guess what? We beat it. We beat our charges. And and for him to be an advocate and sit there and make fun of me and my family and call me a child abuser, he has no respect for people who have won their cases. And he's supposed to be an advocate and doesn't respect when somebody's went through all the hell and they ended up winning. And then he says, you know, in that same blast that he did on me that I haven't won anything. Oh, yes, we have. We've won case after case after case. Well, We've won an appellate court I'll case, just, Randy. Sure, Melissa, I'll do you a favor. I'll just put it out there for you. To anybody that wants to go and join Team Rev It Up, Rev It Up, anybody yeah. who wants to join that, um, don't give them your information. Don't answer questions. Use it against you. Don't do it. Just don't. A good answer. And don't. Why don't think he ain't gonna turn on you. You can fight through, through your court system, and these are people that are volunteers, and they don't ask you for your information. They help you with your case. Don't do it. Don't give right. him anything. Don't, because he will use it against you the minute you put. Just like Fran, the minute you question something that is. Hmm, maybe that's not right and I should research it. And the minute you get that information and you say, wait a minute, this isn't right, he's going to throw you under the bus, just like Fran. Fran hurt my case. She called my court, just like Randy would do. They get involved. They don't even realize it. Don't give anybody your information. Get a lawyer. If you can't afford a lawyer, learn how to fight your own case. If you can't fight your own case, Get a lawyer. <laughs> I go back to right, it. Cost my book. Me and my husband, we started out in the mountains. We had nothing. We lived on a thousand dollars a month. Now look at where we're at because we worked our asses off, we fought our asses off, and it took me six years to be able to get where I am with my kids. It doesn't happen overnight. Anybody that's going to promise you that is full of shit. The minute you start putting your case online, they are watching and they will use it against you to every freaking little bit of extent they can. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Stay. And I've seen a lot of cases like that. Jamie Starr Johnson. Uh, yep. You really, you know, you're, I, I got I to gotta get off here, but because um, I got things going on at the farm. I got a client here with her. But um, listen, Rudy, you're a good guy. You're a true speaker. Thank you, Melissa, for putting all this out there. Thank you for having me on. I really, really, really appreciate it. I you're hope welcome. that uh, people that are listening will actually listen and, uh, you know, think outside the box a little bit and not inside this little social media network. Because there's more to life than social media. There's more to, it's like my husband always says, he goes, as a PI, he goes, there's three sides to every story, mine, yours, and theirs. Okay? Right. Never just one thing. Never. And you've got to think like that. It's never just one thing. But here's the something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say before I go. Randy, you don't have control of me. You don't have control of my friend. You will never have control of us. Ever. You lost it, you're a loser, and get lost. Speak what you want to speak, don't care. It's your character, not mine. Melissa's happy, leave her alone. Her son will realize, and that's another thing I'm going to put in real quick, is I'm afraid this man's going to hurt hurt that boy. Yeah, me too. He's got an anger problem, and it's only a matter of time, so... We'll see what's going to happen, but I got to get off here. You guys have a great night. Rudy, thank you for Bye, speaking girl. your truth. Melissa, you thank you for being a, a platform for people to come on and speak truth about. And uh, you guys have a great night. 
Hey, Amanda. Right. Thank you. Thank you. You yeah. too. For you, right. go, uh, yeah, I'm gonna talk to uh, Melissa when, when after you get off, and I'd like okay. to uh, me and Melissa to start doing if she wants to, we could do this once a week. Um, and so good bring to me, Rudy. Guests, bring some guests I'd on love and I'd yeah, love to come on. that was wonderful. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we can have we can we can have debates, we can have round table discussions, we can have <laughs> fun you know time. If, Randy is more than welcome to come on anytime. Anytime. That's what I'm saying. Let's let's do a debate. He didn't attempt to call in. I have not seen his number attempt to call in so far, but we'll see. Well, the truth hurts. The truth hurts. And sometimes, you know, he may, his, his hemorrhoid may be activated. Yeah, well, uh, I got to go take care of my clients on the farm. So I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday time, night. You Thanks you again. You have a good evening, All right, Amanda. Girl. All right. Bye, Bye guys. Bye-bye. Bye, girl. Yeah, but we need to do this. Uh, we'll let's do this once. Let's do this once a week. Um, yes, if you gain... Uh, and we can bring guests on here, let people get their stories out, and we can we can bring people like Randy on that want to debate, that want to have a legitimate debate, where 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 we give somebody two minutes to talk with nobody interrupting them, and you give them two minutes to respond. Um, we can make yeah. it fail. We can make it fail. You ask yeah. your questions, we ask our questions. Um, I think that would be uh, I think that would be pretty awesome. I do too. I mean, and you know, I can set it up. I mean, uh, just call me and let me know what nights you want to start doing it on, and and I can clear my schedule and we can start doing them. That's fine with me. Well, I think I think I think we covered a lot of ground tonight, yeah. and uh, hit a lot of bases there with uh, everything that's going on. Um, Amanda was pretty informative about stuff. And, um, you know, whenever it comes down to my case, it's, it's just going to be real easy for the prosecutor. Um, and I, I don't even need a lawyer. And I mean, all I got to do is go down there and sign the papers. They got everything ready to go, you know. And, um, I mean, all the prosecutors got to do is just hit play. <laughs> okay. And a few yeah. pieces of paper go flying across the room there and that's it. That's it. Well, and, and, and Melissa is just not – I know it's one other person that is – well, they're not in North Carolina anymore, but it's one other person that's uh, got got pending pending paperwork. Um, you've got Melissa that's got pending paperwork. I mean, this guy is just getting hit left and right with legal legal stuff, legal stuff. And he's getting hit by different people in different states. Um, so he can't say this is a conspiracy. He can't say that, you know, for someone to claim to be so smart, so smart, you know, he laughs about my videos. But most of the time when people talk to me on the phone that are normally used to watching me on Facebook, they go, oh, well, you're completely different on the phone uh, than you're on Facebook. Well, Facebook yeah. is just where I go play at. Um, it's where I play at. It's where I have fun. It's where I listen to music, drink beer, have a good time. Um, you know, but when it's time to be serious, I like to be serious. Um, I like to be informed. I like to be educated. I like to be uh, where I need to be. Um, Hello, Melissa. Hey, we got a caller. Yeah. Who? Hi. It's, it's Jim Michelle. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? Glad you're calling in. I'm good. Uh, yeah, I've been listening and I've been taking in everything. Um, I know Gemma, y'all did got. You see, um, huh? Did you see the post he put? I forgot I had the Rooster or page, and I was going through some of my old pages I don't use anymore. And he posted uh-huh. comments on that. He said, "Yeah, team or whole." Didn't expect this loophole, and it had the name. It, it was showing text messages that were sent to him, but it don't show a date and it don't show a time. 
and it didn't even show a picture. It just said Gemma Shale. And it was like yeah. uh, the, the Gemma Shale person said, yeah, I just watched his live. And Randy said, uh, yeah, he has a uh, – he has a something of them. And then the person said, uh, yeah, he makes me sick or something. And then he goes, yeah, he just don't know that when I take him, I'm waiting for him to stumble and I'm going to take him to the woodshed. And then the Gemma person said, yeah, I want to just, I think I may go steal his camper with him in it. Um, and then Randy says, yeah, we can take it to the desert with him in it. Um and like I was telling Melissa before we did the show, I told Amanda, I told a couple other people, I said, why would, why would Jim Michelle want to, uh, why would she, why does she hate me? Because uh, it's not would, her. It's it's obviously a mirror page. And, you know, Gemma had already sent me a bunch of stuff about, you know, some of the mirror pages that have been done uh, on her. And it makes no sense because I just played – and, and Randy had posted this yesterday where that he was going to do this live big thing, you know, on the Millers in two weeks with drone footage and talk to the neighbors. And so. Oh, I hope Jimmy, he does do talk to my neighbors. It? That will be interesting. I hope he does. I hope he really does talk to my neighbors. Uh, that was because I'm related to everyone around me within about two miles on those. So go ahead. Talk well, to Jim, my neighbors. Jim, he is a compulsive liar. He has yeah, oh, I know that. Neighbors. Drone, he doesn't have a drone unless somebody has donated a drone to him. And then he probably wouldn't have enough sense to operate the drone. Um, <laughs> he'd probably crash it in someone's home. Um, oh, he's probably going more, on Google uh, Google Maps and looking at over my house and everything and checking out every, all my, where I live. But, it, but that's another question. Which house is he looking at? Is he looking at one of the rental properties or is he looking at my home? Right. Because my name's on both, so good luck. And But I, the people that live around the rental properties, um, I'm related to y'all, so, so go with it. Um, I'll start with y'all saw what I posted today. Um, I didn't hold anything back. I let all my past out there from my 20s on up to, yes, I did use a fake name, uh, last name. It was I shouldn't have. I know I shouldn't have. But when you start something like that, it's hard to stop. And I never used it to scam anyone. I never used it in a legal way. It was just I created this persona, and it's hard to get out of. When you're on Facebook, or it was MySpace at the time when it started, and then Facebook, and you have this name, and all your friends that don't really know you know you by that name. It's hard to stop. And I did. I have. I've come clean about it. I put, yes, I was arrested for, uh, it was cyber stalking. The guy was actually sending them to himself. One was from a Fort Bragg computer and one was from his home computer or PlayStation. He was booth calls. It came all out in court. Uh, he went after my lawyer actually from the stand and ended up being in contempt of court. And he was convicted of everything that I had against him. My charges were dropped. That's the only thing. I've never even had a speeding ticket. Yeah. So dig on me. Dig, please. I mean, you're not going to find anything. Um, But they started, or I'll say however you want to put it, I knew when I blocked them that it was going to get ugly. Uh, I talked to my attorney about it, and I told him, I said, as soon as this happens, I don't want to be any hard feelings with anybody, but this is what's going to happen. And he said, do it. I blocked them, and here we are today with me all of a sudden public enemy number one to Team Rev It Up. We're all public enemy number one. You took my slot, girl. (laughs) 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 And you did the same thing that that I did. You you gave money, you supported, and then when you caught on to it's not real good, you know, and you wisen up and and, uh, uh, you cut the funding, and then you have to do a little bit of unfriending there because you know they don't take no graciously, you know. So no. you know you gotta block them, and then and then when you do, oh my God, you're pip- public in- enemy number one. Yeah. Oh works. yeah. Um, I've had I've had family members cussed out because they wouldn't give information on me when the whole <laughs> debacle of whether I was uh, 
faking my death or not. And I put that out there. Everybody can read what happened. Um, no, I didn't fake my death, but it just about comes to that to get away from them. Um, Y'all have heard the rumors. Every, anybody who listens to this that knows anything, just go look on Randy's page. You can see the Barbie Dodge show, which was very, very entertaining. Um, I kind of thought uh, Amanda's figure wasn't exactly true to form because she was kind of short. And, but my Barbie doll, that wasn't me at all, I don't think. Yeah, yeah I, I like I liked, uh, I liked the rumor. I, I actually went my, my butt off that he was playing with toys. I mean, it was just funny to me. I know. <laughs> like, oh God, he has lost it now. He's playing with baby toys. Oh my God. Right. Yeah, I saw that. He went and brought him out of yard sale, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. It Maybe he keeps private. them around. Could have been his private. <laughs> could have been his private collection. Um, just saying, it could have been his private collection. I he wonder like if he a... left him beside the toilet. I said oh, he yeah. probably. <laughs> that probably is. I thought, look, I... he probably takes. He probably takes baths with those, and he'd be going, hey, Gemma, hey, Rudy, hey, uh, Melissa, <laughs> hey, uh. <laughs> oh, I need oh to get, I'm going to get a picture of that doll and put it as my profile picture for a while. <laughs> That's what you need to do. I'm going to find the purple, I'm going to find the purple-haired troll and set that as my profile picture. Yes. You know what I may do? I may go out this week. I, I cut my hair tonight before I took a shower, and I cut most of my mohawk off. I just, I still got a little bit stuck up in the front. I think I'm going to give me some purple hair dye this week. Um, <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm going to get me uh, – and I'm going to get on live with no shirt on, and I'm going to stand like that little troll, uh, troll doll, <laughs> and I'm going to be Randy's real-life troll. Yeah. <laughs> Oh but, I mean, God. you know, we can kind of laugh about it and, and everything because it does get ridiculous. But when you're playing with people's lives and you're bringing people down and you're tearing them apart when you don't have the full story or you're making bits and pieces of the story up, that's dangerous. That's, that's yeah. evil. That's mean. I mean, and it, I got involved with the back and forth and bullying with Melissa, and I'm ashamed of it. That's not right. I don't care what anybody does. You don't do that. You don't tear anybody down for any reason. If they got something to say to you, let them say it and walk away. Especially on on social media, block them. Walk away. Don't don't deal with it. Don't go back and forth. I'm not doing that. That that's. I apologized to her the other day for for the way I acted. I know she's not ready to accept my apology, and I'm good. That's fine. But I'm not going to be that way. Right. That's right. Um, and, and Gemma, that's all I tried to do. That night, that night I did that live. I was not taking sides for anybody. I just stated a, I stated a, a, a common fact. We were all, yeah, not, we're all, no we're chaos. all in this. Yeah, we're all in this for one reason, and that one reason is Randy Scott Davis. Randy loves to see any of us fighting with each other. What Randy did not love to see, you know what Randy did not love to see? Randy did not love to see that Melissa and Amanda was on my live. Randy did not love to see that Gemma was in the comments. Randy did not love to see that uh, everybody, all of us, was on that live that night. It pissed him the fuck off. Excuse my language, but it pissed him the fuck off because Randy at that point realized that he lost control. He lost control, and he's not getting the control back. He lost his girlfriend, Melissa. He lost what he claims, uh, and I'm still confused about that. One minute she was his girlfriend. He had proposed to her. Then he said, oh, no, 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 that was all a joke. That was all a joke. No, it wasn't a joke. He told me on the phone that it wasn't a joke. But he bragged about, yeah, she's going to buy me. Well, we're going to be flying around in airplanes. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. We're going to have that. I'm going to have a brand new truck, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, you're living in a damn fantasy world. Um, well, you know. Throw out there what he didn't care about, though. You said, okay, he said he didn't care if I had, if I was whatever. It didn't matter to him as long as I had the money. Yeah. He Remember? Said, one night he said, he said, he said, wow. I don't care. I don't care if she's got. 
I don't care if she's got a penis. And he didn't say penis, but I'm trying to keep it clean on here. He said, I don't care if she's got a penis bigger than mine. He said, it don't matter. He said, you know, I'm going to be flying around. I'm going to be driving this. I'm going to have money. I'm going to have that. He showed his true colors, his true colors. He's mm-hmm. not in this for the children. He wasn't in this for the love of Melissa. He's not in this for the love of Melissa's kids. He wasn't <coughs> in it for the love of Gemma. At the end of the day, he is in it for the love of money. And the Bible says, the Bible clearly states that money, money, money and greed is is is, is your ultimate evil. It's your ultimate evil. And Randy is evil. He's evil because he wants he wants greed and he wants money and he wants control. Um and he takes these weak and damaged people that may be a parent that lost their kid, may be a parent dealing with substance abuse. I hate hearing them say, that fucking, that fucking whore, she's a crackhead or she's a pill addict. Okay? Did you ever ask what may have got this girl to be a crackhead or a pill addict? You ever ask this alcoholic why he's an alcoholic? You ever ask this homeless person what made them get homeless? He you know, shows no compassion. No, no. Some people are put in position because they put themselves in those positions. Some people some people were just dealt a shitty hand in life or they made bad decisions. And it was like Amanda was saying earlier, and I said, We all have closets in our we all have skeletons in our closet. We all have a past. That's why you, that's why it's called living. You move on from your past, and you do the best you can do to make your future nothing like the past ever was. And it's people out there, it's people out there that will tear you down for your past because it makes them feel better about their present. And that's what Randy is. Randy has no present. Randy has no future. So the only, the only okay. future he has right now is tearing somebody else up and making somebody did I feel know bad. You, Rudy, did I know you previously to that phone call? Because you were put, it was a, a live you were doing, and I said, well, wait a minute, and I sent you a message, and you said, call me. And we talked for a while. Had I ever, before that day, and it was only, what well, it was less than, what, three or four weeks ago, had I ever met you? Had I ever talked to you before that day, no. except for on when he, huh? Nope. Were we nope. involved in any secret societies together? No. Ha, have we ever been to a white supremacy meeting together? No, I've, I've, I've never been to a meeting or burnt a cross in somebody's yard with you. Uh, so he'd probably uh, say uh, that, but no. go ahead. Um, no, no, um, but and Glenn Miller is not my uncle. Um, I don't know the man. I've never met the man. But see, the thing is, that's the point we was making earlier tonight. Mister Randy National Enquirer Davis will take. So look, it won't real hard for him to say her name Miller. The last name is Miller. Let's see. We're going to say Rudy the white supremacist because of the stuff his stepdaddy did. So I can pull articles on his stepdaddy. People ain't going to look in the article and see that the article ain't about Rudy. It's only about his stepdaddy. So they're not going to question what I'm saying. I'm going to fill in and add all this other stuff, and people ain't going to question it. They usually can see that it was an article in the newspaper. So then he says, well, Gemma's last name is Miller. So that's how Rudy knows Gemma is through uh, their, their white supremacists. No, I had never talked to Gemma in my life. I, and I told Rand that in the beginning, I didn't know who in the hell Gemma was. Um, you know, I had no clue who she was. Um, and then we talked that, that, that first time. Um, and that was just, like I said, that wasn't that long ago. Um, and now he's coming out with all these crazy accusations. And, I mean, I don't know where he's getting them from. Where they're coming. And I know where they're coming from. He's making them up in his head. He's making them like stuff up. Like the conspiracy up. within a conspiracy? What's yes. the conspiracy exactly. within the conspiracy? 
what what is that? I don't know. There was no conspiracy. It was, okay, you're attacking me now that I've blocked you. You're uh, going after me after I have cut ties. I had nothing bad to say about any of them. I didn't put anything out about any of them. Uh, I just blocked them because I knew what was coming. I watched long enough. When someone walks away, what happens? I saw what happened to Melissa. She walked away. Melissa, you. I saw what happened to Melissa. She, the other one, she walked away. Uh, I, Rudy, y'all got into an art or not an argument. You besides parted ways in whatever way. I don't know what happened, but you didn't agree with the way he was doing things. Up until then, he was always calling Rudy. Rudy, you know, do a show. Rudy, we're going to do this, and it was all good up until you disagreed with him, and then you're total crap for the rest of your life. You're, you're everything's out there. Before everything was fine. You were good. Yeah, that's that's what we were saying right. tonight. Was that you know I, I made a note, I made a couple of notes on that. That you know everybody is everybody is as long as you're part of his team, it don't matter your past. It don't matter what happened in your case. It nothing matters because if you're part part of team rev it up, you are the elite. But the second you disagree with him, it don't matter if he defended you for ten years. You say something bad about him tonight, and he's been supporting you for 10 years. First thing in the morning, he's going to have 800 articles or posts on his on his Facebook, on his on his uh, YouTube, and he's going to be slandering the shit out of you. And I don't understand how his followers, his supporters, why are they not sitting here going, well, wait a minute, you told us this, this, and this was a lie about him or her. But now you're saying you're bringing it back up. So that just shows me that that little circle of Team Rabbit up he got, they are no better than he are, than he is. They are and shit Rudy, stirs. I, I want to point out to everybody, too. I mean, they got to realize the Team Rabbit up, it's actually nothing. I mean, there's a website that's out there, but it's not – a business within the state of North Carolina. It's not a 501C. It's nothing as far as the team goes. You know, and, and Randy got mad. And, and y'all can look down at the screen board and you can see the screenshots where he was attacking my son. And he attacked my son and was threatening to attack my son because I said just this to him that night. Um, and I wasn't even really, I wasn't even talking to him. I was talking to uh, Melissa McDee on her Facebook page, okay? And that's where that came from. Um, and it was, you know, a live that was going on. And all I've simply stated was there is no team rev it up, that Randy and I were the only people that ever worked cases. Uh, Maria did not work cases. Chris did not work cases. Even uh, Jay did not work cases. You know, or anybody else that was on the team. It was me and Randy that worked the cases as advocates. You know, and I've never been an online advocate before, okay? So this was entirely kind of new to me because I work in my own backyard in my own county, and everybody knows what happened to me. They know about the charges and how I took how I took social services down and got, you know, them audited and the social workers fired and, the, uh, you know, a bunch of stuff happened when I won my case. Um, but there is no team revved up. It's, it's non-existent. It's something that's in Randy's head. And as far as I can figure out, in my opinion, he wants to be like Eric Carroll, who just came out of the woodwork, out of nowhere. And the guy's just brilliant. And then, you know, uh, he starts talking. And a couple of months later, he's got like 64,000 followers. And then now he's got, you know, like over a half a million and he flies to places. He's in the uh, Father's Rights Movement, and he flies to different places, and he's talking to senators and the congressmen, and, and you name it. He's talking to them, and he's got a huge following, a huge backing. And I see that this is, like, the direction that Randy wanted to go in, and he just can't get the ball rolling. It's just not going anywhere. And one of the reasons that it's not is because of just this tonight. He's attacked everybody who has supported him. In the end, uh, he just attacks. It's attack, attack, attack. It's ridiculous. 
It's uncalled for. I'm not in the. And it's illegal, mm -hmm. people. It's illegal. And he gets mad at us because he lumps us all together. We all have a problem with him. They're all individual problems. But he lumps us together and says, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. They're, they're coming at me. No, Randy, won't you take a minute to reflect on how you're treating people and what you've done? Can you not admit to any kind of, of, uh, of what you've done is wrong and that you need to stop this? I mean, it's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. And, you know, I don't want to have to go to North Carolina and do this. I've given him every opportunity to leave me and my family alone. But guess what? Every time he does live, he throws my name out there. Every time I say something on Facebook, look down in that tread, folks. Right there on the screen board, you will see those screenshots where he's threatening my special needs son. And by the way, he did come out with all that stuff, you know. And so, you know, he wants to play this deck of cards. Well, you know, I'm taking my full house down there. And uh, I'm filing. So there's that. But go ahead, well, well, Mr. Rudy. Melissa. Melissa, I see we are past eight o'clock, Mark. I don't know how long. I don't know how. I know blog talk will go on for uh, X amount of time. Uh, my clock I, is I think it's twenty-eight minutes that we've got oh, left. We I, yeah. Oh shit! I thought we were only from six to eight. Uh, this is what they gave me. That my clock's running twenty-seven minutes now. Yeah. Oh shit! All right. I didn't know. I thought we were running out of time, but. Um, yeah, you have another interview uh, at ten, right? Yeah, I got a I got an interview at ten from ten thirty to eleven. That's what a guy from Kentucky, um, and uh, he had a list of stuff to interview me, and I told him I just I don't, when when someone interviews me or I interview someone, I don't I don't like uh, I don't like writing it down on paper. I kind of I like the element of surprise, and my thing is. I think the best way to get truthful stuff from people is unrehearsed or unthought about. So when, like I told a guy, he was like, well, don't you want to know what I'm asking? I'm like, no, dude, just hit me with your best shot. Um, you know, yeah. let, let me roll it off. Let me roll it off my head. Because that's something I don't have to think about. If you give somebody time to think about what they are going to say, you don't know that they're going to be completely honest. You catch somebody off guard and you just start banging them with questions, like we did last night on Randy, he was not he was not ready for what he was not ready for what we did last night because it was not pre rehearsed, it was not his rules, it was not on his battleground. It was you know and that's my motto of doing anything. So that's what I told the dude tonight. I was like, Look, I said, I don't wanna read the questions, just you know, when the when the interview starts, you just start asking me questions. Uh either okay. you know, it's all I can do is answer them or not answer him, uh, you know. Well, last night, we so, were, you know, we were doing an interview, and he called in, you know. I mean, I, I was asking about the movement and slowly moving into your case, and, you know, I mean, I popped a question about how that you knew him and how you guys had met, and, you know, next thing we know, he's calling in, and he didn't get the reaction, in my opinion, that, that he wanted. Hang on, we got oh, another no, no. caller calling in here. Hey, you're live on air. I'm sorry to take off for a minute, but what did I miss? Oh, not too much. <laughs> We've got <laughs> no. uh, me and Rudy and uh, Gimmis on here. Gemma's on here? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Gemma. Hello. How are you? Yeah, my daughter, Dave. Good. Good. All right. So, uh... What have uh, you learned from Randy? Hello, Gemma. Hello. I, I can't Hello. hear you. That's Hello. You said, what have you me? learned from Randy? What did I learn from <laughs> I learned not to. I, I learned to block him. That's what I learned. Yeah. <laughs> I learned he takes yeah. advantage of people. Um, I learned that as long as you're paying, you're good. I learned when you're not paying, you're trash. That was loud. Um, you're trash. Um, that's about it. You, you, you're fine as long as you're in his good graces. You get him mad, and then you're, you're shit. 
at that point, excuse my language, but that's what happens. So mm-hmm. do you understand, though, do you understand, though, why some people came at you the way that they did? Do you understand why? I do, but they're like, again, and like I've said, there was a back and forth situation going on. And there was also right, things right. I was getting, I was getting from other people. And this is one I talked to, I think Melissa and I think Rudy, and I'm just not going to put names out there. But I was being called by so many people and being told so many different right. things. It was, right. it was overwhelming. Honestly, it was overwhelming. And then it wasn't just that; it was text, and it was people texting me. And then there would be a name that I thought I knew, but it wouldn't be the person. And I finally got to the point of saying, "Do I know you?" When somebody <laughs> would send me a text, it got that bad right. for the per- first couple of weeks. It was that bad, and then it became a back and forth. You attacked me first, right? You understand that, right? When I went after you, and I guess that's where you put it, after I attacked, it was over Sebastian. And it was a conversation going on with Sebastian. Right. And, and all I saw was, video, was an adult. First video, it was the first video that I put out, and I kept my mouth shut for a long time because you got to understand, I've known Randy Melissa for a long time. And I... I finally opened my mouth and put that video out. I never attacked Sebastian. What I told Sebastian was, stop letting people manipulate you. And people took that as an attack, and I never attacked him. I attacked Randy. I put the truth out about Randy, but it really had nothing to do with Sebastian. Really, it didn't. The only thing I said was, stop letting these adults manipulate you. And everybody twisted that and turned it and said I was attacking Sebastian. I never attacked Sebastian. Did I put a video out that he did and I screen record it? Yes, I did. Because you don't have that right. If Randy says that nobody else has the right to record a video and then delete it because that shows their guilt, why does a grown, and I get this, I have autistic child in my house that's not mine, but he's here 24-7. So I, I know autism, okay? I knew Sebastian before this happened. This isn't the Sebastian that was before his mom left. At all. Mm. At all. So you have to understand and see from other people's points of view. So when you came at me, that's why I was like, blah, blah, blah. I don't give a shit. You know, you know, you don't know. You don't know. And you have to understand where the people that have a clear mind that see through the bullshit are trying to say, hey, you're not getting it. And these followers are written these followers for a reason. They get views. They get content, they get information, they get all these things. Well, right? Randy loves to pit people against each other and watch them fight it out, right. you know. I mean, right. and to fight his battle for him. I don't hear what Gemma said about You know, he'll just, uh, uh, he has a way of pitting people against each other to go at each other's throats, too. And um, that's my opinion on on What's some of the stuff that, 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 that had went on. And, you know, I just know <laughs> that Randy's sitting back just laughing, you know, at everybody for doing that, you know, because that's all from, from what Melissa. I heard. What he's not a that. nice person, in my opinion. He's and, just and not I'm, a nice I'm just person. Be real. I'm just going to be real because I'm real about everything, and anybody that knows me knows I'm real. Right. Gemma, are you talking to Randy still? No. Okay. So there's no way, shape, or form that there can be any type of conversation that can come out and show that you've been recently in contact with him. <laughs> no. Okay. Nope, not at all. Okay. So what, I I, what I did, I did post what I post on Rudy's page and what I posted on Melissa's page. Mm-hmm. I did post that on his page. I did not respond. I don't know if anybody else did. I have not. And I said I wouldn't respond to any of them. And I put out there that I put what Sue had sent to a family member, uh, what got the ball rolling. Not to cut you off, but I'm going to ask you another question. Uh Do you feel that Melissa has the right to be as angry as she is? Yes, I do. And, and I, okay. I think I said that so a little bit earlier. I understand mother, that. You under, okay, so you understand as a mother and where she was and what she was about to get accomplished and how it hurt her children, and now she's missing her other child. Do you understand 
why she is so angry. I do now. And why? Okay. Okay. I do now. At that point, would like you, I said, would I you would... be willing to publicly give her an apology? I have apologized to her publicly. Okay. Well, are you willing to do it now? Uh, yeah, I just said I'm sorry. I, I think I said it a little bit earlier. I'm very sorry for the way I acted. I'm very sorry for Please. my part in it. I did say that just, just but in the beginning of the old. conversation. Yeah. Okay. I missed some of the conversation, so I missed some of it. So I apologize if I made you repeat, but I just you oh, know no, that's you no problem. From, from a friend, a friend that's been to their home is actually her friend. You know, somebody that really, truly cared about both of them. You know, this is this this is to me, too. I never expected Randy to turn on me like he did, ever, or Melissa, or anybody. Like, these people, I don't know. Uh, I didn't people, expect he, it either. I, honestly, I did not. Well, I, I knew it. I knew it was going to happen. He done it to me. He well, done it to me. Done it to how many times? Yeah, he well, he done it to me big time, 10, 15 years, however long ago it was. And, and every I time watch, he you back, it's because he wants information. Yep, or, or if I start winning my case. And, and she told us that, you know, we find out that Randy's been giving information to Washington State. He's been giving, he was trying to give information to shoot on the mom. And he was giving me hey, information hey, from. Hey, Rudy. Well, Rudy, I hate to cut you off, but I have somebody here that has something to say. Okay, it's somebody, right. somebody very important. I just want to say that this is Melissa McDonald, and I just want to say, Gemma, I accept your apology. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure you were manipulated in a lot of ways too, like I have been, and I think it's a very shitty person that would do that to anybody. And I accept your apology, and I hope you can accept mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. See, this is beautiful. That's all I wanted that yeah. night that I did that live. That's all I yeah. wanted was because this is what Randy well, doesn't want. We, were, we are it. strong women that were manipulated by a master manipulator. Right. And the lesson I take from yeah, this, but I should. I know what, I, I, what, I, what I have learned from this lesson is I know what I'm willing to accept in my life, but I'm willing not to tolerate in my life, and I have been blessed, and I have been put in a better situation than I could ever dream of being. And, and yeah. it's, the fight is not over with my kids. That's not over at all. That's right, girl. We all, look, it's, it's, it's a reason... There is a reason that everything happened in life. It, it was, it's a reason all of us are on here tonight. It's a reason all this is happening. Um, you know, my God. Okay. Yeah, my God. Okay. My God. Hey, Rudy, this, this is one of the reasons that I wanted to start podcasting again. I know there's so much on each side of this, and it's time for people to, to – uh, Come together, come together and realize what has actually oh. happened, and a lot of people have gotten hurt. A lot of people. Yeah. And I'm yeah. very it's, proud of, of Melissa McDonald, and I know she's know in a better this, place. I know she's it. happy and she's safe, so long as he don't drive up there and cause any problems. Um, yeah, that'll happen. Right. Well, well, I think it's enough of us that would be willing to rent a bus. If he showed up there, I think I think we would rent a little Winnebago or something, and we we just drive up there and and uh-huh. give some support. Hey, Rudy, I don't want to cut you off. I know there's going to be people listening to this, and I just want to say, I know my son will hear it eventually. I love you, Sebastian, with all my heart. Things are not what you think they are, and I am a phone call away, a Facebook message. <laughs> Whatever it takes, I'm here. And I will come get you at the drop of a hat. All you got to do is send word. And I hope he hears that message. I do. I'm happy yeah, that, that two people that were against each other could come together and understand that forgiveness is forgiveness, you know. You know, but Randy you preaches seen? a lot about God and, you know, the universe works in its ways for a reason, and uh, yep. I don't hold grudges. I don't do that. It's, it's a waste of time. 
I believe that everybody has a reason for everything. And if we can come together and put it out there, you know. God redirected my life. Right. Right. That's what happened. So. Well, I mean, you look at this. This is a beautiful thing. I don't know if y'all realize that or not. But... Never treat another person like that. Never. Yeah. And, I mean, Are look, you okay, me Gemma? And... Bye, Gemma. Okay. 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 It's a blessing right, just... to be given forgiveness. I mean, really is. Yeah, you can't, you can't buy that. You cannot buy forgiveness. You, something, forgiveness right. is something that has to be earned. And I believe and it came at... from Melissa's heart. I do. I know her. Yeah, I know her know. voice. And uh, I believe it came from her heart. And, Melissa, look at all come out of this. Me and Jason Shute has fought for 10 years, 10 years. And you can ask Melissa Mack and you can ask Amanda. When they told me he want, went, that we want to have a conversation, I ain't going to lie to you. I, I figured the conversation was going to last maybe a minute and a half, two minutes top. It lasts for a and damn a, hour in my car. <laughs> yeah. I was a and, yeah, and it went it went beautiful. Uh, you know, we forgave each other for a lot of stuff. It's bad. It's bad when, and it ain't really a bad thing, but but it, it, it's sad. Let's not say bad. Let's say sad. Let's let's take the B away and put an S. It's sad that one shitty person that starts with an S too. Um, one shitty person could bring all these people together. And get all these people to get that peace we all need to move on to the next steps in our life. Um, We're all parents, Rudy. We're all parents that love our children. And when somebody tries to step in between that and tries to make, you know, a big deal out of something that's not such a big deal when it's already been healed and already moved forward and somebody wants to open that wound back up, you know, it's just like I said to Gemma, you know, you understand. You understand why I did what I did. You understand why I had to dig in. You understand. She understands. I was never going to, was, it was never malicious. It was never that I was going to do anything to Gemma. I would never do that. It was the fact that, hey, listen, we're trying to tell you, <laughs> and you're not listening. <laughs> and my kids are hurting because of this. Yeah, her kids, you know, I mean, her other kids, she was minutes away. They had their stuff packed. They were ready to go. She almost had full custody. And they <laughs> dropped the bombshell, you know, bombshell. And in her opinion, you know, her mind, it's all because of Gemma, which rightfully so. But no, it's not. But it's not. It it was Randy. Yeah, Randy would have done it with anybody. Randy would have done it for any reason. Randy would have done it. Randy would get up with a stone if it had a pussy on it. Well, I I look at it like this. I've been told about every time that I get close to getting my kids, I would slip out or lose my shit. No. That is a complete and utter lie. Well, this Melissa, woman this is has awesome. been a blessing with me. She works. She's got a job now. She she takes care of the kids here. She does. She, and, and, and let me tell you, so my my husband brings in veterans, and they're single dads with kids. And I have one here that's autistic, and he's high spectrum, and he connected with Melissa because Melissa knows autism, and she taught me things, and she's taught him things, and Aaron's even been like, damn. I didn't even know how to do that. Like, she's an amazing, amazing woman. And for Randy to give that up, nothing against you, Gemma, but for Randy to give that up and everything she's done and everything that she's been through and everything she, she worked towards with Randy, for him to let that go for nothing, stupid. That shows his character. It shows his because character. Because he did, he did her a favor. <laughs> He did. The only person he's doing a disservice to is that boy. That boy. That's a check. I mean, it's, I call, it's, it's the in- I, Huh? Sebastian's only income to him right now. That's that's all it is. It's like right. I said. If Melissa right. was to call Randy and say, "Look, uh, they're going to give me uh, four hundred dollars a month more than what Sebastian's getting." Randy would Randy would be all over the internet and like saying, "Oh, I'm I'm depressed. I've got to have that bird back. I've got to have the bird back. Bash has to leave." We already thought it was funny. That's that thing. my bird, and That's James bird. Davis gave me that bird. Right, and that bird is happy here. 
Nobody likes him there. But my bird would have grieved herself to death if she couldn't have been around me. And that she bird is imprinted on me, and that's the word for it. She's imprinted. That bird is so happy here. You <laughs> hear singing now? You can hear her singing now. Hang on, watch. Pretty bird. See if she'll do it. Pretty bird. You want to say hello? What? At least that's something they don't say. Rev it up. I'm thank God you didn't like <laughs> the bird. <laughs> Thank God the bird never rode. Thank God it never ran there. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Can, can y'all teach the bird to say uh, hashtag carrot down? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's been trying to teach it to say a lot of things. I thought the one thing that it would actually learn would be get the dog out of the house. <laughs> And it hasn't. It still it wakes up every morning and goes, Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> Very loudly. <laughs> but it's got a lot of interaction with people it didn't have before, and the bird's doing yeah. very, very well. So, well, hey, look, can, I got to go. I, Melissa, I got a, a, a uh, other Melissa, um, not Melissa Mack. I got an idea. I think we need to do like. 30 days from now, let's do a let's do a reunion of tonight and see where everybody's cool. at. Yeah, see where everybody's at, see how everybody's now getting along, how everybody's life's going, how much better everybody is 30 days clean of Randy Davis. Um, that would be cool. I don't know. That'd be That's good. What yeah. I'm well, I, can, I can speak from experience. My life, and it's, I'm going on 90 days, I think, somewhere in there. Is completely different. Tell them why. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. Listen, she <laughs> would she wouldn't go into the refrigerator without asking for permission. She wouldn't go to the bathroom without asking for permission. I don't do that she wouldn't go outside without asking for permission. Now she realizes, and I keep telling her, Melissa, you can do whatever the hell you want. You got 20 acres. Go do whatever the hell you want. You want to go swimming? Go swimming. You want to go see the horses? Go see the horses. She's like, she got shot when I handed her the keys to my car and said, go into town. She said, are you serious? And I said, yeah, go. You got a license, right? Yeah. Well, then go. Take your what, time. Wait, wait. Like, Amanda, you know, Amanda, you know when my kids got out of foster care, they were so traumatized from being abused that when I got them first home the first time, I remember my little boy said, Dad, I'm thirsty. I was like, uh, go get something out of the refrigerator. Uh, well, can I get something out of the refrigerator? I was like, well, what do you mean? Can you get that? It, it, that's your refrigerator. But my kids right, were asking that's me. Exactly how it can, was, right, and that's exactly yeah. how it was on Melissa. It doesn't just pertain to children. You can be, and I have been there, and this is the one of the big reasons when I, I you know, you got to remember, I've known Melissa for four years. I've known Randy for four years. I've been on the phone. I know. That's why Randy hates me is because I know so much is when she got here and she, it was the same thing. Do you have something to drink? You know where it's at? Go get it. What do you mean? Do you need coffee? Like she kept wanting to wait on me. I'm like, you don't have to wait on me. This is, you are not under anybody's control. Please go do whatever the hell you want to do. Like I'm not slamming a coffee cup down going, I need coffee right now. Rev it up. Yeah. Do whatever the hell you want to do. You're a grown freaking woman. Be a grown see, woman. And it took me, that's, it's taken her two months. And you know where we, where we were at the other night on the live and Melissa was angry. She has a right to be angry and Gemma understands that. But now she's at a point where, you know, she can say, I forgive you and I get it and it's not your fault. I'm not a bitter person. Never have And she's not, she's not. She's the sweetest person you'll ever meet in your life. And I've rescued a lot of people that didn't want to help themselves. And I'll tell you what, this is the first person in my life that I've actually helped, actually wants to help themselves. So that says a lot because I help a lot of people. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm tickled. I love her southern accent. She gets so much attention up here. <laughs> to the damn accent. Yes, I do, and I'm going to make a lot of money with this. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> she gets so much attention up here. We go. Yes, ma'am. I'm so tickled. 
Okay, we got four minutes. I'm going to go through each caller. You'll have a, a minute to say something before we close out. So I'm going to start right. with Jenna. What's your closing segment for tonight? This is an awesome. I'm so glad I called in. Um, thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Rudy. Thank you for giving me a chance to talk. And uh, thank you for the forgiveness. Thank you for the forgiveness of everything. I mean, the, the stuff I put out today, Amanda, you were gracious. You were very gracious. And, I, you know, I think I, I don't know if I told Melissa or if I told Rudy that, your comment, I said, you have every reason to hate me, and you may not even like me, but your comment is mad respect because it was so gracious. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome. Thank okay, you, Okay, uh, the next one is Amanda. You got a minute. I just want to say thank you to you, Melissa, for creating a platform and allowing us all to come on and come together and understand that, you know, forgiveness is forgiveness and allowing us to get our stories out and to get everybody on the same page, because it's really hard to put, you know, when you got social media, everybody on the same platform that can hear each other out and understand where we're all at. And I just want to thank you for that. And Rudy, thank you for, everything you've done and being honest and coming forth with everything you have and bringing us together. And I guess, you know, that's all I have to say. And Gemma, you know, be who you are. You don't have to hide behind anything. Be happy. And I tell this to Melissa all the time, be happy with who you are. And the minute you're happy with who you are, it doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter your religion, anything like that. Be who you are. Be real. That's all that matters. And the people that love you will be there, and the people that the don't people matter. are supposed to be in your life will be attracted to you. Right, them. exactly. So that's all, all I right. have to say. Thank you so much. And uh, Melissa McDonald, do you have any last words here tonight? Thank you all um, for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. And I know I didn't say much, but I really do appreciate it. And um, I'm sincere in saying that I do forgive Gemma. You'll not hear any words out of me at all. And the last thing I want to say is I love my doodle with all my heart, and he knows that. And I love my other kids just in case they see it fall out and Ashley. Mama's not giving up. I'm not a quitter. Thank you. Rudy. Oh, I just want to thank, I just want to thank everybody for, uh, I want to thank you for doing the show tonight. I want to thank you for inviting me on the show. I want to thank all these people that got some kind of closure in their life tonight. Because that's what these shows are supposed to be about. It's not about was me and Melissa going to come on here and get a lot of views tonight. We didn't know if anybody was going to call in. We did this show tonight for one reason. um, To get truth out. To get story out. To hope we could find some kind of conclusion and we had no clue that this was going to happen uh you know we're we're wanting people to be happy we're wanting people to be successful in life uh you know we're not on here we're not on here to uh hey uh, send me some money uh pay my light bill pay this pay that pay this uh you know what happened tonight you can't put a price tag on you know, right. you can't you can't fake this. This is not scripted. This is this was this was raw emotions. This was real life experiences. This was real life what happened, and that's what Randy will never have on any of his shows. Everything he right. has is scripted. We we no, have and real nobody's life. invited. Have... Nobody's invited. Yeah. He's locked down on his Facebook page over here. But okay, we're out of time. But this is my last words. And guess what? They're for Randy. And this is for Zane, a friend of mine on Facebook, that Randy, it's sent to you. Your song is... What? Oh, she lost it. Everybody have a good night. Thank you, so. Thank you guys. Gonna tell me lies. Best recognize real quick, bitch. You got the wrong bitch, bitch. You got the wrong bitch. You got the wrong, wrong bitch. If you think you done slanderized my name, you done lied.
lost your mind, ain't got time for all these games, bitch. You got the wrong bitch, bitch. You got the wrong bitch. You got the wrong, wrong bitch. Cause I fight my tongue for no wizard. I fight with fire and a snow blizzard. I tell that I'm real sick. I don't know if I'm sitting down. We got cold lizards like, oh, it's with business. That's a silent eye and I'll be silent the day I see more fucking monkeys fly. They flying now? Now if you think that this witch won't expose The fact that five O's dropping houses on hoes Bitch, you got the wrong bitch Bitch, you got the wrong bitch 